you wish to speak to something that's not on our agenda tonight, you have three minutes to come up to the podium, please. State your name and address for our record, and three minutes to state your case. Um, so we will start with microphones on. And we will have roll call, please. Mayor Pilon? Present. Councilmember Alders? Here. Councilmember Greenberg? Here. Councilmember Rainville? Present. Councilmember Blake is out of the meeting tonight. And then also in presence we have Anoka County Sheriff's Department Commander Wayne Heath, Assistant Fire Chief Joe Lawrence, and City Planner Liz Stockman. All right. We'll take a uh, motion to amend or approve the agenda as presented. And I, I would uh, like to add um, that uh, before the sheriff's report, the concrete bid for the fire station that we were handed out tonight, And I would like to uh, add in uh, item five a uh, discussion of potentially uh, redoing all of the ebony in the bid that we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, talking to some contractors, even though we have a pretty good patch there on the southern part near 185th, since we're redoing that road, uh, they've suggested it would make sense to grind up that patch and do one. Uh, repair all the way through rather than risk that thing not holding up with the new road. So I'd like to add that uh, as item B5, 5B, sorry. And then uh, I would like to uh, pull 1H and put it down there with the discussion and the seasonal help. One what? what? 1H, part-time recycle center tenant. You don't want to discuss that? I want to pull it out of consent agenda so we can discuss it. Oh. So that'll be down in the administration. So H and then Lori's ad is under administration as well? Yep. H and K. So we'll have, uh, as it reads, we'll have consent agenda as presented except for item H. And that will move down to item, uh, item five, along with seasonal help application for the parks and the farmer's market stipend. So those three items will be added to administration under the planning and zoning member training and the ebony patch. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainbow. Is we're meeting next Tuesday um, in regards to uh, the the, the uh, position of planner, um, should we have discussion on what we're planning, how, how we're going to, uh, how that meeting is expected to go, what we think we're going to do? I would think that would make sense rather than just show up without a plan, so. But that is item F under five. Any other changes to the agenda? So 
we have, um, just before the sheriff's report, we have the concrete bid for the fire department. Uh, Mr. Chief Lawrence, did you have anything else for the fire department? Okay. So, we have a motion to accept the agenda as amended. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. So we have consent agenda. Uh, is our first item here. And I should say this is uh, Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. And this is our regular city council meeting. Um, we have the approved council meeting minutes from 4 2021. Approve the financial reports, approve treasurer's reports, and claims dated March 10th, 2021 through June 1st, 2021. Uh, resolution approving liquor license for Longhorn Group doing business as bootleggers, saloon, and eatery. Resolution 2021-21 approving liquor license application for Burns Bottle Shop and Northwoods Bar and Grill. Uh, RCA appointing new members of Planning and Zoning Commission. RCA request for Nowlin Heritage Festival Committee. Resolution 2021-23, accepting coronavirus fiscal recovery fund established under the American Rescue Plan. Uh, clerk's memo to approve part-time seasonal ditch mower. And the resolution 2021-24 and-25, awarding contracts for the road projects. And I will say, um, on the road projects, just as a clarification, uh, I've never seen the bidding quite so tight. Uh, but the Ebony and Garnett project came in within $30 of the two lowest bidders on a uh, very large bid, and they were both those bids were $50,000 below everybody else. So that, that was some sharp pencils there. The um, company that uh, was lowest bidder is, was not familiar to us, so the engineer did background checks and did reference checks. Um, so his recommendation is to go with the lowest bidder. I've talked it over with Lori, and, uh, and the attorney is in agreement that they are the lowest bidder, and so the engineering firm will be making certain because this is one of the most challenging roads we ever had in our city uh, to date. Uh, we'll be making certain that uh, everything goes well with a, an unfamiliar contractor. So, uh, with that recommendation from the attorney uh, or, or from the engineer and the guidance from the attorney, uh, that's why this is in the consent agenda tonight. So, with those items up for consent, do we have a motion to? Uh, Approve the consent items. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Raymond. I move the consent agenda as um, presented, present as amended. All right. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, any floor items? Anybody here for floor items? All right, seeing and hearing none, we'll move on to the concrete bid. So, I apologize for the, uh, the late distribution of this, but a little background. Um, at our last meeting, we had discussed, work, uh, there was a request from Centerpoint Energy for uh, an easement to access their gas line to the backup generator that's being put in uh, the tower on our property there. And so there was discussion with the planner and with the attorney as to was there any potential for Centerpoint to contribute to uh, completing the fire station concrete work since that's where their easement would be. And there's a drainage issue right there now where the dirt is higher than the parking lot, so all the water runs down in pools right by the parking area there. And so there was a, a request uh, to Centerpoint to discuss whether this was feasible or not. Uh, the short version of it is Center Point said no, uh, not interested. As a matter of fact, they went to T-Mobile and they're going to share the easement with T-Mobile and they're not asking us for an easement anymore. Hmm. So the, what you have here is a bid that the fire uh, station contractor had pulled together prior to that because um, in the original bid, the only thing that the contractor was responsible for were stoops in front of the two doors, two access doors to the fire station addition. The building official said um, that the second door on the east side of the building 
is an, an egress door and therefore has to be handicap accessible. Five feet wide and ramping down to the parking lot, which was not part of the original bid. Uh, subsequent to that, they were also looking around and the concrete in front of the service door going into the station itself is busted up and the concrete going into bay four has busted up where the door uh, meets the, the slab. And so what you have in front of you is the, the sidewalks around the new addition uh, minus the part that the contractor is responsible for. Uh, cutting away asphalt and hauling it away. Uh, fill for the sidewalk. Delmoing and hauling away, hauling away the section of concrete by the service store and the same thing. Saw cutting and demoing and removing concrete down in the bay four overhead door. And so that uh, bid came in at 48.53. Now this proposal was dated 5-11-2021 and because we were waiting to hear from Centerpoint, nothing's been happening on this. This bid is only good for 30 days so that puts it out till the 11th of this month, which is this week. So normally this would have come through the, the chief to Lori and been put on the July bid, but with the cost of materials and labor going up uh, so quickly, uh, we didn't think that this would still be a good bid in 30 days from now. So uh, I asked the chief to send it to Lori and submit it for your approval tonight if you would agree that we can go ahead and get the concrete work done before costs go up. So I would uh, make a motion to approve this uh, to proceed so that we can finish up the fire station building and get the, uh, the final on that and uh, get our bills paid up. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainville. I will second it for discussion. All right, so we have a motion and a second, so it's open for discussion now. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainville. And to come, uh, City Clerk Strike, do we have 4853? Somewhere hiding, or out, out in the obvious that uh, it's. Mayor Council, I just received this at three and have had not had any time to look over where we're going to pull this from. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need to look at where we're at in the budget with this project, and if we're not going to pull it from that project, where we're going to pull it from. Okay. Just Thomas, do you do you have any idea where where we sit on the? Construction budget at this point, or what you and uh, the chief have been talking about, Mayor Council. Um, we're kind of coming into the entire construction project after it had already been started. So, as far as I'm aware, there's no more funds within the construction project that at least have been approved. Okay. So Mr. Mayor, Councilman Rainville, I um, have we received any documentation on the next. Uh, round of funds um, for the um, the coronavirus funds. The uh, we have not received uh, documentation. We uh, we just approved in the consent agenda that we will accept the money yeah. from the government, and they have to disperse it in 30 days. And they've got maybe two weeks left to get that to the city. Okay. Once we've approved that, we'll accept it. Um, do not know the the criteria other than. Uh, the podcast that I've listened to or the uh, training sessions on it, um, it will be less restrictive than our first round and we'll have three years to use the funds. Um, they are looking uh, to have significant impact on broadband and public safety as part of that. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Council Member Alders. <clears throat> Can we not take another 5000 from the uh, um, pull tab disbursement that we got from the um, hockey clubs. Then we get like $15,000. We took seven of it to buy <clears throat> air regulators, air regulators, and other equipment needed from the fire department. This feels like it's part of that to finish the fire department. <clears throat> I propose you take another 5000 from that. You'll still have. 2,000 left, and you're going to get three more distributions throughout the year. I think that's a good idea. What do the other council members think? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainbow. Uh, that seems very reasonable. Councilman Greenberg. Okay, so with the motion on there to approve this with the funds to come from 
4853 to come from the uh, donation from the Hockey Association uh, with the understanding that the Hockey Association will get the upgraded rink material with additional funds coming in yet this year. It will be dedicated. Um, any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, Sheriff's Report. Commander Heath. Good evening again, everyone. Thank you for bringing the cooler weather with you. Yes. If I had the ability to change that, I probably wouldn't be standing in front of you tonight. <laughs> That's right. All right. Yeah. Again, good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple of things for this month. I wanted to give the council an update on the calls for service for the month of May uh, 2021. Uh, during the month, we did have 136 calls for service in the city. Um, so a little bit of an increase over last month, but we tend to see that generally in the summer months anyway. And with our summer seeming to come uh, earlier than normal, I'm not surprised. Uh, a couple of follow-up things. Uh, I wanted to let the council know I did have a follow-up check-in with uh, some of the leadership from Bar None today. Um, they let me know that they are trying uh, some different approaches to minimize their calls for service at the facility. Uh, one of them being uh, they've worked with Alina Health and, and, and Alina EMS to try to segregate some of their non-emergent calls for service. Um, they, tell me, they told me today uh, that they are going to be calling Alina directly for some transport. Uh, using just their regular business line, so it won't generate a call for service to us. It's gonna, it'll basically be a private uh, uh, interaction between a business in the city and another private entity, and it'll keep public safety out of it. Um, they did assure me, though, that they have plans in place that should their situation go from being a non-emergent um, type of incident where all of a sudden it becomes a, a safety issue for people at the facility or the person involved that they would indeed call 911 to activate that and, and whether or not we need fire, EMS, and, and, a, and an advanced life support type system uh, with us, that's what they would do. Um, and it sounds like in talking with them, they're going to have uh, for these non-emergent transports, it'll probably be a, just a basic life a BLS response. Uh, to it and that'll be again for those non-emergent medical type situations and some of the lower level mental health stuff that isn't a, a crisis ongoing right now and they plan on utilizing a health officer from their from their staff to sign any holds that are necessary which normally uh, we end up doing as law enforcement or or another health officer on the scene would end up doing when you do that does that obligate the county then for that hold? That, I don't believe so because this would be, this is not. I'm saying that when, when you do it right now, my understanding was if you transport and you sign off on the hold, the county gets the bill. And if it becomes, if it becomes a county issue where we're dealing with social services and child protection and stuff like that, yes. But if it becomes, if this is now just an issue between the, the, what they're proposing now would take us out of it. And, and yeah, keep that, I, I like that idea. Would be an issue, mm -hmm. keep that issue from happening. As I have two questions then, uh, Assistant Chief Lawrence, uh, what is our response to this type of call? Because I've seen on the record here that fire has shown up at bar none for certain medical calls. Mayor and Council, right now, uh, now then fire is only responding to your, I call them the, the top five, so difficulty breathing is unconscious. Uh, we wouldn't respond to a psychological emergency unless it included one of that those criteria and typically the dispatcher will pick whatever is worse so um this impacts us for I, I, it, anything that reduces call volume in general um does impact us by less trips out there in terms of fire alarms smoke stuff like that um we would still respond to that that would not be impacted by this okay. And then the second question I have is, is that our, our last um, emergency meeting, one of, one of the things that came up is, is the Alina response time out here. And, and it's, 
below par. It's, they're, they're showing up slower than we would, uh, and it's not just targeted, but slower than agreed upon here. I, I, I want to be careful how I say it, but the chief was saying that it's in an unacceptable range at this point. Is that safe to say? Yeah, and it's hard. I like to use data to justify any arguments that you make. Um, private ambulance services currently aren't required to release any of that data. The data that they do release, uh, there's questions about how accurate it, it may or may not be. So, um, yeah, I would say it, it is not uncommon for this part of town, and Sheriff's Office can uh, probably agree to it, uh, to have an ambulance take greater than 20 and in some instances greater than 30 minutes. And that could be on whether it's a car accident, a uh, heart attack, anything along those lines. And that's what the chief was saying, he's working with them to improve that time. So the question I would have is, will, do you anticipate that what they're, the solution they're proposing here will take ambulances out of service? Mr. Mayor, actually, we'll probably do just the opposite. What we're talking about, uh, if you recall, I mentioned basic BLS or basic life service. Most of the ambulances that we see responding to medical situations and car crashes here um, are an advanced life support. Um, the BLS is a basic life support, so it's a lower level. The advanced life support trucks and rigs usually have a paramedic and an EMT crew or two paramedics. The basic life support is a little bit lower level, which we generally don't see responding to our medicals and crashes like that. So, um, and maybe the assistant chief can help me with this, but I would see if this is truly the path they're going down, it may actually improve the amount of ALS rigs that are available for, for use. So, Mayor Council, typically you'll see a short-term improvement, and over the long term you'll see it actually get worse because ultimately what they'll end up doing is initially they'll assign a BLS ambulance, meaning an EMT with an EMT. Uh, however, they will encounter their own uh, response time issues with those vehicles and they'll start pulling from their ALS because as long as they're sending the minimum level of care uh, so if they have an ambulance stationed out in somewhere in this area and their BLS ambulance is you know 20 miles away they'll just send their ALS ambulance to do that perform the transport and bill it as a BLS which still removes that ALS ambulance out of our service area so it's something that we'll have to monitor very closely. They're quick to say it'll be a BLS run. That doesn't mean it's not their ALS truck performing it. Um, ultimately, I've kind of indicated they have a bottom line uh, financially to meet. And if that means sending an ALS truck that wasn't already on a call to something where they will get paid, they will do that and run the risk of not having something in the service area. So that's something I want the council to be aware of, obviously, that this is something the chief's working on. Um, chief and assistant chief are aware of it. But obviously, 20 to 30 minute response time on an ambulance is not acceptable. And if, if we jeopardize that under that scenario, we want to make sure that we're cognizant before we put a stamp of approval on it. So. And, and just so you're aware, Mayor and Council, this isn't something that the Sheriff's Office would ever say, this is what you should do as an organization. We wouldn't tell the city you should give your approval for this, and we wouldn't tell bar none, we think this is an acceptable way of doing business, because that's just not our our place to do that. And, and I agree. Um, with one of the things the assistant chiefs, well, all the things the assistant chief said, but, but we need to monitor this. And that's actually what I told the leadership from bar none today. We have, you know, we as a, as a city and your, the council and myself and others that have been involved in this have seen improvements at, at bar none time after time after time, yet we always end back, back up in the same place. So we're looking, and I told them today, we're looking for consistent long-term fixes to these issues and that we, we will have to watch and see what happens and i think that's you know that's the, the caution we have is is um, sometimes by saying to to somebody like yourself here's here's our plan they can think that we're moving ahead we told the sheriff's department about it and it's we all want to be on the same page you may have told uh, commander heath on this day what you're thinking but there's no way that, that as a team we would come to an agreement on this. And certainly 
cognizant of, of what we know from the emergency management meeting that um, our response times need to improve and we don't do anything that jeopardizes that for the general public for a private entity that hasn't figured out how to do it for themselves. So it's a great arrangement, but not if it takes ambulances out of service. Certainly. Yeah, the resource has to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they probably didn't mention they'd be paying for that. <laughs> Anything else, sir? Uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of noteworthy calls for service. Um, as with uh, the fire department this month, we had a couple of very uh, interesting calls. On the, on the 1st of May, we had a uh, personal injury crash right out here um, on Northern Boulevard. And um, the initial indications, it was a motorcycle versus a, a motor vehicle, a pickup truck. Uh, both vehicles were traveling southbound on Northern Boulevard. And the pickup truck started to make a left turn. Uh, as the motorcycle, it appears the initial uh, investigation shows it looks like the motorcycle tried to pass the truck while it was making a left turn. Um, and it, uh, the two uh, vehicles collided, the, uh, and the uh, driver of the motorcycle had a severely broken leg, uh, was ultimately airlifted to HCMC, and, and at this point everything is, is known. What, what we know is that they'll survive, and probably have a lengthy recovery, but uh, some issues nonetheless. Um, and it, that just brings up for me, is you might have noticed yourselves driving around. There's, I don't know if COVID did something for people's ability to drive well or pay attention or have patience, but as you go out and about, if you haven't seen it already, if you watch, people are, the speeds are increasing and the, uh, the inattentive driving and things like that. So. As I tell my own daughter, please be safe while you're out there and be a defensive driver. It's just, it's, it's almost to the point of being out of hand. Um, and that's, we're still stopping cars and issuing citations and doing things, so it's not like we're not doing things, but I think people got very desensitized during COVID. And so just a point of information. Um, with that, uh, and just one other noteworthy call for service out at Twin Lake Park on the 25th. Uh, Fire, uh, EMS, and law enforcement responded to a report of a person who'd been uh, shot at the park. Um, and it came out as a sounding fairly dire. Uh, all law enforcement, EMS, and fire got there, rendered aid. Ultimately, after an investigation, it sounds like it was a horrific uh, accident where somebody had a firearm in their pocket and ultimately reached in their pocket to do something and ended up discharging the firearm into their body. So um, the, the case remains under investigation, but there was no, no concern of a threat to the general public other than if you happen to be in the area when that bad thing happened, it probably wasn't fun to be around. But, um, and yet the gun went missing. Yes. Uh, and those, and, and that's uh, unfortunately very common in these type of things when something bad like that happens, even as innocent as the issue itself may have been, um, people panic and they do silly things and, you know, here, take this or however it happened. And by the time we get there, it's long gone or buried or in a trash can that we can't find or out in a lake or pick your place. But that's not uncommon. And just to confirm, these were not now then residents in Correct. this party. I read through all the, the names on the list. There was there were people from now then there that were enjoying the park, but they ended up being witnesses, but weren't a part of that group of people where the incident happened. So these were folks that came in to enjoy the park from elsewhere. And uh, fire responded. Did fire from anywhere else respond? Mayor Council, uh, just now then fire responded to that one. So we had Sheriff and now then fire and anybody else? We actually had, um, because of the, the way the call came out and the seriousness, seriousness of it, uh, Ramsey Police, we requested them to respond. Elk River Police and Sherburne County were close as well, so they came with, with something like that. Because it came out, it didn't come out as somebody that had a self-inflicted gunshot wound. It came out as somebody with a gunshot wound at the park. So we automatically go to the worst case scenario, send as much help as we can to get it all figured out and or at least stabilized and then 
start dissecting it to see what really happened. So we had a lot of help there. And we're very fortunate. We have very good relationships with our surrounding uh, agencies. And we, we do the same thing for them, but this is the payback. When we need something, they're, they're Johnny on the spot and come over and help us. So that's all I have. Anything from council for the sheriff? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Greenberg. Commander Heath, uh, I was at the cemetery doing some duties when uh, I got to hear the various departments reaching the point of destination, and it was quite impressive. It's, it's good to hear. Hopefully the rest of the citizens feel the same way, that they know that when they need help, there's a lot of people coming. So. We were a lot of sirens. We were running the PNZ meeting here. There were a lot of sirens, and, and they were right across the street, two squads in a fire truck. So when I got the call that there's a gunshot and I'm looking at this going, we're having a meeting here. Is this dangerous? He said, what are you doing at the park? <laughs> so, so there was a lot of activity at that same time. The park, um, right. the medical here. and So we had a lot of trucks and a lot of sirens going on. So. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the, uh, the cooperation between agencies. So. We're very fortunate from EMS to law enforcement to fire um, I, I don't have any bad words to say. We get along very well, and when there's work to be done, everybody just chimes in and uh, does what they can to help the cities and areas that we work in. So we're very fortunate here, because that's not the that's not the case in every jurisdiction and locale. So, and I, I see that uh, Elk River Station Three is under construction right next to the school over here. So we'll have a bunch of new equipment and, and people right on our border as well to partner with. So. You say something? Yeah. Mayor and Council, just to piggyback with the Sheriff's report, um, the Sheriff's Office provided the Fire Department with Narcan. So our Fire Department is carrying Narcan now. Uh, at least a month ago when we first uh, got into talks with them, there's already been over 20 uh, overdose-related deaths uh, in Anoka County. So the, it, it continues on even though we feel like it's starting to get addressed. So uh, on behalf of the Fire Department, thanks to the Sheriff's Office for Providing that with us, it is in service, and the firefighters are carrying Narcan now. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mayor Rainbow. To, to Assistant Chief Lord, does that mean we will now be responding to overdoses? Mayor and Council, uh, we always have. Uh, again, it, it depends on how it's dispatched. Yeah, okay. So the sort of overdose that would initiate or at least draw the conclusion to provide Narcan would be an unconscious. We don't assume that it's an overdose until they get to a doctor and have lab testing and stuff like that done. However, there are some indicators that would you know, suggest a patient would benefit from Narcan. At that point, we would administrate it. So, okay. Your, your call-out would be one of the top five unconscious. You get there and you say, mm, there's evidence that yeah. Narcan may be appropriate. What's Narcan? It's an opioid reversal. So uh, when somebody's overdosed on, say, uh, heroin or uh, Percocet, any of those uh, drugs that run in that family, um, Narcan will assist in reversing that. So. And we, we have had a number of instances in the parks where the Sheriff's Department's been able to bring people back from, awesome. from beyond by administering Narcan. If they didn't get it, the person would have died. So. It's, it's that situation. If they're unconscious, typically they're going to. They're going to die if they don't get the Narcan. So. Oh, yes. so we appreciate the partnership again. So. As, as do we. Thank you very much. Yes. All right. We'll move on to planning and zoning. Uh, Planner Stockman, I'm going to take the. Uh... Yes, Mr. Mayor. Item A, FX Auto. This was tabled from the May meeting. And as the memo indicated, they have addressed your concerns, I believe. And I think you, is, you have seen an improvement across the street. Cars moved. Um, multiple vehicles have been moved to the rear yard instead of sitting in the front. And I'll work with uh, the FX Auto owner, Mr. Fralick, to address signage issues. Uh, he stated he'd rather just use the pole or share the front pole out there uh, with, with the Perkins business. So if there are 
No other questions or concerns. I would recommend that you approve the attached findings. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainbow. I, I have two questions on it. Um, mm -hmm. on, on page two, um, 4C. Okay. The existing graveling. Uh, I'm just wondering what a, it, you had say if they are being utilized on a regular basis. What are we considering on a regular basis? Um, well, what I spoke about with Mr. Perkins was the fact that he will not allow his employees to park there. Okay. So if someone happens to pull in and sees that it's gravel and assumes it's a parking area, it's really not his, uh, kind of out of his control, but. Okay. Right. And then the second question I have is on page three, um, number six. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a time frame where the pretreatment and infiltration basins are to be restored? And I'm assuming that the completion of that would include a review that, that's been done? Yes, inspection. He's planning to do it fairly soon, he told me, but technically they'd have a year from, you know, as would any IUP or CUP to be implemented. Um, but it's, it's not that it was filled in, it was just that they're storing things in it. So I guess that takes up volume, really and may deflect some of the stormwater. So um, if you'd like you to see it sooner or put a date like uh, by this fall, you could do that. Mr. Mayor. Council Member um, Rainbow. I, I would prefer that because this is a violation of their initial CUP. Mm -hmm. So if, um, I, I think we should put a time frame in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say this really isn't here. tied into the, the new no. CUP for FX Auto. It's yeah. clarifying what was already previous there with Perkins. Because mm -hmm. that really has nothing to do with FX Auto. It's no. right. Perkins equipment that's being stored there. So. I would like to, to see, and, and I don't know what's there and what it entails to get it done with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if by. Um, July 31 is reasonable, or if we could go to August 31. But I do you defer to your expertise as to what you think is required to get them in? It didn't look like there was much on it from the photos you had. Yeah, I don't think it's a huge deal for a business that has its own equipment. Well, yeah. I mean, we can put, how about you want to go somewhere in the middle, August 15th? Why don't we make it by the August uh, council meeting, then we can get an update if something Okay, so, so August 3rd, well, the August 10th is the council meeting. So by August 6th? That's fine with me. Because I'm almost two full months. All right. Motion. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainbow. I would move approval of the um, uh, CUP and variance for the Perkins property at 19745 Northern Boulevard for FX Auto uh, CUP and variance with the um, additional date of August 6th being uh, entered under number 6. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Amended IUP for exterior storage, 19009 Rhinestone. Mr. Mayor. Plan of Stockman. Due to the co-ownership of this property and the um, fact that, that one of the owners does not wish to see extor exterior storage on this site, uh, we are obligated to deny this request. And if at such time in the future uh, Mr. Demo wishes to reapply, he may do that.
And to, to clarify, if there isn't compliance, that would violate the IUP on the indoor storage? That is correct. It would be expected that Mr. Gimo bring the exterior storage into compliance, meaning all the vehicles that he's brought in need to be removed from the site or stored inside the building. And should that fail to happen, then that could jeopardize the IUP and you could lose all storage. Is that your understanding? Correct, yes. All right, and what, uh, what time frame does he have to clean up the outside? Well, How much is out there? Well, it, under the assumption that he has certain agreements with people, um, I don't know, Mr. Gimo, do you go month to month on all your leases, or how do you proceed? Okay, so uh, does the agreement say that you'd need to provide 60 days notice before removal? Month to month. Month to month, okay. So knowing that, what would be the council's thoughts on the matter? Typically, they would get, uh, or a property owner that is violating an ordinance would get two two-week notices, which is a month, and then begin receiving citations after that. So I would say probably eight weeks is reasonable. <clears throat> Again, if it's month to month, we're well, June shot. So if it gives him a notice at the beginning of July, that means his people that are storing stuff there has 30 days to respond. So I would say August 1st seems reasonable. I agree. So we've got, you know, we've got uh, two plus weeks left this month, July 1st. So that's six give weeks. Them, six give plus them, weeks. Give them notice at the end of the month that they have 30 days to find a spot. All right, August 1st, Council. Mm -hmm. August 1st is what day? It's a Sunday. Sunday. So, July 31st or August 1st, 21? August well, 1st is a Sunday. Yeah, July 31st is Saturday, so it'll be July 30th. July 31st? July 31st. All right, so I accept a motion. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Alders. I'll make a motion to deny the uh, uh, IUP uh, on the property uh, from Dan Gurma with the uh, note that he has till July 31st to bring the existing 2019 IUP into conformance. Okay, I have a motion. Second that. Motion to second. Any other discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Front setback variance. House edition 20066 Boss Street. Donovan and Allison Schultz. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Planner Stock. This is a very unique parcel, uh, being that it's on, the, on a lake lot, a small lake lot, less than our two and a half acre minimum lot size. Uh, the house was built into a bluff. It's got extremely steep slopes from the point where the house sits down to the lake. It drops about 20 feet. Uh, in speaking with the DNR, uh, they are in favor of us moving forward, provided we don't impact that bluff any further. Uh, so the home is currently non-conforming, but being that we are moving closer to the street with the addition and not going closer to the lake, the DNR was accept accepting of that. Um, you may have noted in the planning and zoning findings that were redlined um, there was some added language uh, that was recommended by the DNR, so I incorporated that, and we were to acknowledge that as part of our public hearing, which was done. So they are required to 
add gutters on the north side of the addition and have that discharge into like a riprap area um, or uh, some sort of drain that dissipates the water so that it doesn't uh, start gullying down the hill. But I believe that the Schultzes have really done their homework and done a good job at working with the city on this. So our, our office recommends approval of the variance. So the, uh, the blue on the copies we have on the findings and recommendation, is that clarification since the planning and zoning? Right. I talked about those things at planning and zoning because I had just made contact the day of that meeting. And so I added that into the findings. The and thing do the Schultzes have all this information? Yes. Okay. You guys are good with the downspouts? Yeah. All right, so with the uh, modifications which the applicants are aware of, um, the findings and recommendations here, uh, with these findings and these recommendations to approve, do we have a motion? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Raymond. I would move that we approve the uh, variance to allow for a 26 by 40 house addition at 20066 Bow Street Northwest at a distance of 60.85 feet from the center line of Bow, PID number 1933 25 42 0001. Second. Ooh, Joel. We, had, we have uh, a tie on the second. Still hasn't second. I'll give it to Joel. All right, Joel's got the. <laughs> Council Member Greenberg has the second. Uh, do we have any other comments, questions? Mr. Mayor? Councilman Rainbow. Um, I, I've, I've driven by this numerous times, and it will look very nice and not intrusive. Um, my brother kind of had the same situation on a hill, and you couldn't go back. You had to go forward, and, and uh, it will look very nice. All right. Any other comments? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Get to work. Is it going to be done this year? Hopefully. Hopefully yep. it's by the fall. Uh, All right. Awesome. Get, to get those Good toys luck. inside. <laughs> Good luck. All right. Ordinance amendment. Grading, landscaping, and erosion control escrow. Planner stop. So I revised the, well, I gathered more information, first of all, based on the discussion last month. I uh, talked to, took some time and talked to Shane some more, and then revised the ordinance amendment. I removed some information. So what it comes down to is um, the, we're looking to establish the grading and landscaping escrow. It would apply to all properties um, with residential parcels being low priority uses uh, under state law and higher priority uses are commercial, industrial, or non-residential projects. So in talking with the city engineer about the fee structure, he thought it would be easiest to require a $200 fee at the time of building permit um, issuance and that would be used for two to three inspections throughout the building project um, and then the $2,000 escrow would be held and returned in full unless there is an issue so if the contractor or the homeowner is not maintaining their, maintaining their erosion control adequately um, or there are other issues related to grading and landscaping, if they don't complete the landscaping or grading as according to the plan, um, things like that that would uh, require us to utilize some of that escrow, they would get that full amount back. So the building official does the pre-con inspection. That would leave 
a middle and an end inspection for my office or Shane's office. And then assuming there are no issues, uh, we would return that $2,000 escrow. So the fee would not come out of the escrow. Right. Okay. So the, the thinking there was that it's less, um, you know, accounting work for the staff to keep track of all that at that, you know, so then we just, we only need to tap into that escrow if there's a problem. I think it's a communicated, obviously, one of the, the key things, we've got to communicate what we're doing up front. So it's communicated well, saying this is for fees, and these fees will typically be eaten up with the first inspection and the final inspection. If there's no problem, the escrow is coming back completely. But they would anticipate going in, the $200 is going to be utilized on fees. Would they expect to see anything more on the inspection? Should it be a normal inspection? Uh, no, if, I mean, that would cover the time to go out there and then recommend changes if, if there is any, you know, replace your silt, beds and silt fencing if the, you know, maybe we've had a heavy rain and there's been some wash. Um, I've seen that quite a few times where it just kind of goes over the top of the silt fencing or under. Um, so we would ask them, you know, tell them what changes that were needed and then do a follow-up. Okay. So you're going to do a follow-up either way. Right. And if the changes are done, then the fees are going to cover it all. Right. Okay. And if not, then that's where the escrow is going to come in. Correct. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainville. To Ms. Stockman, um, I would just like to confirm, I know a couple years back we talked about the the, this type of thing and mm -hmm. um, we did not move forward with it which was against our building officials recommendation and our engineers recommendation um, this is nothing different or in addition to anything a person a, a residential property owner who's building a home in any other city that they're it's the exact same thing that they're responsible for so we're not adding something over and above, it's a cost that's associated with building. Um, we just need to make sure that our residents understand that, that we're not upcharging something. And second is that it's clear that that's part of the process. Correct, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Planner Stockman. Um, the, yeah, I mean, this is a state law that cities are required to follow. Yep. So if the residents you know, if we're on a pass-through fee system, the residents are covering their own costs, and otherwise the city's going to end up paying for it. So it's a little bit of incentive to just keep up with uh, what they're supposed to. And I did attach to the pat in the packet here um, exhibit B, I believe. It is B, correct? Exhibit B is an example of a, a short form inspection sheet that anybody could do. In other words, if uh, the maintenance guys were out and they saw dirt being tracked on the roadway or a silt fence down, these five things, you know, they could keep a list of these five things in their truck or whatever. So they would know there was a, an issue, then notify either Sh Shane or I to go out and perform a more detailed inspection. And then um, the actual agreement, which is uh, I thought I put it in here. Is it D? D? Did I have? Yeah, so that came. So C is, C is the long form that the inspectors will be using. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? C is the long form, right, and this won't be Im implemented until fall when um, when Shane addresses some of the other MS4 requirements. He wants to take the time to review that and just update it appropriately. Um, 
So if I would recommend that we create something similar to this short form in Exhibit B and then adopt or um, use that agreement, which is just the property owner authorizing us to use that escrow uh, if they don't follow through with everything. All right, so the specific action items out of this, creation of a short form that's specific to now then, mm -hmm. which is at Seagull. The creating a landscaping escrow agreement. And I would say, obviously, with that agreement, you'd want to have the criteria that's going to be inspected as part of that. Right, and we would include that. And this was... Uh based on a Credit River agreement that they use, and Mr. Rupi's also the attorney there, so, but I'll make sure that he looks at that again, or make sure that he's seen that. Okay. And then the ordinance amendment itself, ordinance 2021-02, it would be those three things unless you have any recommended changes to the ordinance itself. I did simplify. Um, on the first draft, I had accessory buildings in there that were larger than 3,200 and some other things, and I, I removed that and instead just uh, kept the 10,000 square foot or more uh, allowance in there. So if there's a significant amount of grading associated with any project, this would be implemented. Otherwise, uh, generally not required for pole buildings. But any extra building on a commercial industrial lot would automatically be included. Mm -hmm. So we're saying it's applicable for new homes. And then you said the second piece of it is if it is new homes is a given. The only other thing is if it's 10,000 square feet or more disturbance. Right. If they're, let's say they're realigning a driveway and they're adding an addition. Or, so you know, we sort of use our best guess estimate on that square footage. And so in item D, that second bullet needs to be updated. Because it says grade permits, building additions, and ground pools, accessory buildings larger than 3,200 square feet. Did you update oh, that? I don't, I, oh, I'm sorry. What are you looking at? Because, oh, yeah, you're right. The, the form itself. The form has to be updated. Yes, yes, yes. I'm with you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, How's Mayor Rayner? to, to, to Ms. Strike, so, or excuse me, to Ms. Stockton. Um, so it's just to confirm what Council Member Alders asked. It's just new construction, the building addition pool and accessory buildings are not included or they are included? Only if they're large enough For the, to the 10,000 to disturb 10,000 okay. square right. feet. Thank you. Right. I mean, sometimes if you get a 6,400 square foot pole barn, you're adding a driveway, you're adding a retaining up to wall. That 10, there's, you know, there's going to be a 10,000 square so feet. So you had originally said it would not include pole barns, but it could. It could. Initially, I had them all included, or like 3,200 and up. But yes, okay. I, I just think we should evaluate each. Okay. So, yeah. so we're not a limit. We're not saying it doesn't. Um, it doesn't pertain to A, B, or C. It's basically anything new or the 10,000 square foot or more. Correct. Okay. I just want to be clear on that. And single family uses, what's that mean? Does that mean new home construction or is that additions or what is that? Single family uses 
Well, we can change it and specify. We could just put single family new construction. And then maybe B can be titled single family alterations or something plus or anything that encompasses 10,000 square feet or more. We could put some different headings okay. mm -hmm. to clarify that. Yeah, I think you need to clarify because you could have somebody doing a significant improvement on their home that disturbs mm -hmm. right. 10,000 square feet in addition to their home and a, putting up a building. And so really it's anything in our RA district unless it's a church or some non-residential use that's new construction. And then on, on C, one page one ordinance 2021-02C, mm -hmm. uh, $2,000 lot minimum or as required by the city engineer. What, what criterion would he use for? Well, because most projects that are commercial, industrial, or otherwise have a grading permit, that a bond or some other escrow form would be required. So if Shane, if it exceeds 2,000, we're saying it's 2,000 even for a minor project in that, in those that are non-residential. Um, but at the discretion of the city engineer, he can require more, which and that's stated in our ordinance that they, that they figure that out and they have to provide a letter of credit or a bond or cash escrow. Okay. So at this point, you want to clean up the language and <clears throat> represent it? Can we simplify it too? Can A just be $1,000 too? I mean, it's a big house that encompasses 10,000 square feet. Um, so why is one two and why is one a thousand? Well, because should the property owner fail in um, meeting the conditions of approval or they, they don't grade the property, they don't sod or seed the property, then the city has to go in there and do it. And Shane's thinking was we at least need that much to but you would have to do that in item B as well. And just item B, you have a scenario where somebody's paying a thousand dollars and item A, somebody's paying two thousand and you're potentially disturbing the same amount of land. I well, no, see with a new construction, you're closer to an acre of disturbance with your septic, your driveway, you know, your house, your retaining walls. A lot of people put up a shed at the same time. You know, I mean, I guess it's, it's your call, really, but I think the concern is that if we have to go in there and do it, I mean, I think it's going to be a very rare occurrence, you know, if it ever happens, but... Well, I also know that it's another $2,000 that you're putting up front. Mm -hmm. So, and, I mean, you can fill me on some history, but have we had a ton of issues with this? where somebody builds a home and doesn't put the yard in? It's pretty common to wait over a year. I've seen several, but, and then we've, you know, had some erosion issues that we've had to go back out and address. But, no, I wouldn't say common, but it... it Probably happened. when we first became a city, we had more problem because it was 2008 and people were failing... Builders were failing, a lot of people were abandoning things, and the city got stuck with some road projects and, mm -hmm. and some erosion issues that <clears throat> we picked up the cost for. And mm -hmm. Fortunately, we had some escrow and bonds from builders that we were able to quick get out before the banks foreclosed everything. So uh, That would be uh, probably the worst-case scenario if the economy tanked again and people didn't finish it. Right. People out here, you... You know, you're going to put your work into it, you're going to do a good job, typically. I, I understand the, the difference in it, because when this came up before and Shane was pushing it and we didn't do it, um, there was a significant difference between the disturbing up to 10,000 square feet. We, we picked that so you could do some things around your yard without having to, to 
come in and get a permit here. 10,000 square feet was the recommended where it is true when you're doing a house, you're disturbing most of you know, a good chunk of the lot. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if there is failure, there will be more exposure to the city. Um, again, with all the other fees and upfront costs, it is a consideration. Right. Well, Council, what do you want to do? You want to have Liz clean it up and present it one more time? or What do you want to do on the uh, A versus B on the 2001,000? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Greenberg. I'm okay with uh, A and B being 2,000 for A and 1,000 being B. All right. Other Council? Mr. Mayor. So to clarify, Council Member Greenberg, A and C would stay two thousand, B would be a thousand. As printed. Okay, right, as printed. I, I would agree with that also. If they if they do it and do it right within the time frame, they get it all back. So. Yeah, it's just frustration having that out that, laid out front, but. I get that, but but again, they would have that anywhere that they go, so it's not unique to us. Um, it's something that, that you would have to adhere to in any other city. Well, they, I think we're saying that on, on any acreage size lots, you're, you're going to be disturbing the better part of one acre out here. I tend to put in a drive in a building and primary structure and a septic system and an accessory structure. All right, what about the language cleanup? Let me sit on that. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainville. I would ask that Ms. Stock, we table it and Ms. Stockman um, brings it back after it's cleaned up. If we're not going to have it effective till fall, um, a month of delay of getting it cleaned up is not going to harm us. Mr. Mayor. Planner Stockman. The intent was to try to go forward with this part of it and get this implemented and then some of the other detailed inspection lists would be, um, if they need to be updated, uh, would be amended in the fall. But this part of it, um, we actually, our ordinance already requires an escrow and we just have never adopted a process for one. Mm -hmm. So the question I would have is if we're not going to have the checklist and that criteria until the fall, what does an inspector check against? Well, we have the existing checklist. We don't need to implement the new MS4 changes till okay. next year. Okay. So is that checklist available to somebody who's building right now? <clears throat> yes. Do we have a copy of that? That would be the one you see attached in Exhibit C. So C is the existing one? Yes. The short form or the long form? Long the long form. Learn from the MPCA? Right. <clears throat> and then the... That's currently what our inspectors are using when they go out and say. I, I would propose we package it all at once and improve it all at once with a day versus piecemealing it together. If we've gone this long without anything, I think it can go another month or two before we implement it. Because then we're going to get into... Somebody gets checklist A, somebody else gets checklist B, and there's going to be differences in inspection methods between A and B. Mm -hmm. I think it should be, here's the ordinance, here's the date, here's the checklist, go. Okay. Makes sense. Mr. Mayor. Mayor Stock. So then in that scenario, we would proceed as we currently are, meaning there would be me inspecting the property at before they're issued their certificate of occupancy mm -hmm. to be sure that everything is uh, established. Seeded, sodded, final graded, and that there's no erosion issues. Well, you would be using Exhibit C, correct? Uh, no, that was a 
Well, generally. I thought that you, what you said we're using now. Did I misunderstand? The, well, generally it is. It's not a specific list. I mean... Because I, I would think if we have something like Exhibit B, and the homeowner has that, mm -hmm. your inspection should be pretty straightforward. Right. Um, what do you do in the fall, Liz? If someone, if it's going into winter, you don't expect the seating or sod to be in, right? Right. So then they have to spread. They have to either hydro seed, you know, with the erosion control stuff, or they have to spread straw everywhere. Mm. And then they have to keep their silt fencing in place too or their silt rolls, whatever they use, until they get it final, graded and seeded. I mean, just fundamentally, I struggle with this a little bit because most of the people that build out here build in the middle of a plowed field. So we're telling people that the plowed field is fine, but where you put your house in the middle of the plowed field, you have to spread hydro seeding or straw, but the plowed field 100 feet to the left or right is okay. I mean, the intent of this is, if you think about it, it's like in the middle of a city. I totally agree with this. I'm not saying that you, Nowlin is unique in every way, but if I just look at where my house is built, it was on a 40. They took 12 of it, and they built a house on it. So the other 28 acres can erode, but my house can't. So I just struggle a little bit with I understand the intent of this thing, but I also look at we are not slamming in houses on quarter acre lots. We're putting right. homes on five and 10 and 20 and 30 acres, which are typically tilled. So I think there's got to be some reasonability here to what we're doing. In terms of, I understand that we should have a silk fence up, but it seems crazy to me that we would require someone in the middle of a plowed field where they built their house to hydro seed an area going into winter, but the farmer next to them can plow it up going into winter. I don't go in no till now, though. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not by my place. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. You, you got some uh, old, old timers there. How's my rainbow? To Ms. Stockman, don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I may very mm -hmm. well be. But don't our ordinances state that there has to be so much of a, a seeded yard or a, a established yard from a perimeter? So you're not talking the whole 12 acres like in yours, but <clears throat> is, am I wrong in thinking that? Generally, if, if there's a 50 plus foot uh, undisturbed area of natural grasses or whatever okay. that acts as somewhat act like your silt fence okay so are so, we go ahead I'm, i apologize um yeah i see what jason's saying too and yeah we we don't want to be unreasonable and the, if the silt fence is up and installed properly then there's really not a concern and it's, you know, what we're looking for is more, is there any erosion potential onto the street or into the wetlands or yeah. onto your neighbor's property? And, and that's where we kind of got hung up before because on the streets here, we got a gravel street. Uh, we were looking at wetlands. We're looking at, you know, obviously, we, we've got our uh, streams and creeks and, and chains of lakes here. Mm -hmm. And the wetlands, that was understandable. Yeah. You know, again, totally agree. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do right. erosion control and have put up, you know, erosion fences or the silt fences. I mean, mm -hmm. that seems to I'm just envisioning the last couple of houses have been built in the middle of a field. And now you're going to tell somebody it's going into winter. You have to cover this thing with straw when literally you're in the middle of a field. That just doesn't seem reasonable to me. So I would, I mean, we just, I, I understand the requirement. I also think we need to be what's reasonable, what's not, on what, what our expectations are. Expectations are you have to have a silt fence up. Expectations are you need to make a reasonable effort to get your yard in. If that can't happen before the fall or winter, 
we're going to retain your two thousand dollars until you get it in. Right. So we wouldn't do both. So if they if they so the erosion control is decided before they're issued a building permit and they show that on their site plan. So if that's left up and we can we can expand this, you know, list that we attach to any agreement that says you gotta do these ten things, you know. So whatever we can we will know the property owner will know that ahead of time. So if uh, if they have taken down their silt fence when they were supposed to leave it up, that's the scenario where they would be required to spread straw or the hydro seed it or something. Okay. But I, I agree, it's not reasonable. Mm -hmm. And if it is just a field, and especially if it's a big, um, you know, distance to the neighbors, you're right. I get it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And again, this is coming up because of the, the MS4. And, and, and I'm looking at the meeting that apparently Shane went to, and there's some other action items out of it here. And that's where you know, we've struggled ever since this was created. It's a, a phased program that all the costs are on the city, and there is no uh, mandate for funding. So the, each year the MS4 grows, and, and we become responsible for the cleanup, and there's no government money to help us right. pay for it. So what they're saying is you, you want to make sure you protect your wetlands and especially your sediment retention ponds and your um, anything that's on the Upper Rum River plan uh, because you're going to be obligated as a city to clean it up if something goes wrong. And that's where Shane has been trying to say it needs to be clear to the homeowners so we don't get stuck with the cost of cleanup. What I'm saying is, Jason, what you're indicating here has to be so clear because residents and builders, people that are coming in to build, if we can't figure out what it means or if it's a gray area that says, well, you have to comply with this and you don't, you know, we need to make sure it's clear that you're in the middle of a, a plowed field and they're not doing no-till and, and no wetlands are impacted, that they're not going to get the same treatment as somebody who's right on the edge of a major waterway or wetland on a hill and they take down their silt retention and don't see, mm -hmm. how do we make sure that's clear and not arbitrary to the inspector? Yeah, and I mean, I'm trying to try to put myself in Liz's shoes and make sure she's successful out there too, right? Because ultimately right. she's talking to our citizens and it's like, I don't want a bunch of people that are all frustrated that what the heck's going on. So it's like, right. The silk fence comes down when the yard goes in, and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, just normal language. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that can be, well, this is what I'm in the process of doing for the meeting next week, is creating um, expanded forms with everything I can possibly think of, and including, I mean, we can include some language in that regard, or see exhibit whatever that has our, you know, list of things. So if you look on exhibit C, which is the MPCA detailed list, it says that the checklist list is an option for small sites, which would be um, a residential site. Large construction sites and linear projects require more extensive location specific inspections so that this detailed list would apply to commercial, industrial, road projects, and subdivisions of any kind. Flats that would be where the, where the um, you know, builder is doing mass grading like Brian's been. I just yeah. want to make sure that, that our checklist, our ordinances are self-evident to a layperson so that your typical reading of it, we would see the same thing that you would see that they would see. And, and any time we get beyond the um, self-evident to a layperson, we get into trouble. Well, we can phrase it in such a way and then make reference to the ordinance, you know. Phrase it in such a way that it's clear, but refer back to the ordinance because a lot of that language comes out of yeah 
I mean, I, I understand that. Do we have that video that is referenced in uh, mm -hmm. F there? Oh, for the for learning how to do the inspection, you mean? Yeah. Stormwater maintenance training video will be sent. Training should be for staff that deal with not inspection side of MS4. Anyone who needs training on MS4 permits. Are you looking at Exhibit A? <laughs> yes. This was an outline that the wetland specialist did, Casey Fisher, before she left. We now have a new wetland specialist named Matt that will take over some of this. But she was just briefing us. We had an online meeting um, about some of the changes that are forthcoming. And then the highlighted section on page two is is what plays into the forms that I'm, I've been discussing. But yes, I mean, it's actually, I believe, an online class that you have to take. I don't know if there's a fee. I'll have to look into all that. It may, you know, it may be something you want your public works guys to take too. I don't know. So on, on Exhibit A, um, it goes to H MS, uh, 220 MS4 report, mm -hmm. and then it goes to page 11 of 28. That was, those are two different things. You have a two-page um, outline, basically, and then... That page 11 is out of our current MS4 permit. And I was just highlighting those areas that require the checklist currently that we really aren't doing. But those would be some of the, you know, top 10 things that we're looking for. Yeah, so that's the question, you know, and I was asking, do we have a checklist we're using? And it says here we should. Here's all the things we're supposed to be doing on that page 11 of 28. So this is from November 16, 2020 through November 15, 2025. And there's obviously 28 pages of something. And this page says you should have written checklists. Right. And, and again, if I'm giving you my $2,000, I want to know what the checklist says so I, I can comply. Exactly. So right now, do we have a checklist or don't we? I'm confused. So mm -hmm. item B is the uh, Otsego version of the short form that we said we were going to... Well, that's Otsego. Well, that was, yeah, and that was kind of new. And they, they did that to simplify. Yeah. And, and, items, and, and Exhibit C is the MPCA yeah, version of it. Yeah, and I thought I heard that that's what we're doing right now, but... And say we're relying on Liz, right? That that is what we have to do for the non-residential sites. Right now, for the residential, do we have anything? We do. We generally go by uh, item B, exhibit B. I'm just looking for the basics. Is there any dirt on the road? There's no erosion potential. Okay, but that's in your head. This is just yeah. Looking right. I like to see things on a checklist so that if I'm applying and putting my money down, I can see what you're going to be looking for. Correct, but currently because we require no money, so that we are, okay. in some ways, it's... Well, if I'm building, I still want to know what you're looking for if you're going to keep me from occupancy. So does item B cover the items identified, or does it satisfy the MS4 requirements? Uh, no, I think I would expand it slightly just to explain some of these. So right now, B does not expand or does not cover page 11. Of See you, gentlemen. Thank you. Have a good night, all. Yep, take care. Good night. So right now, the example from Otsego, Exhibit B, does not cover the items you highlighted on page 11 of 28 from the existing MS4 plan. Right. Right. We, so if we're going to have a checklist, we should cover the requirements out of the existing MS4 plan and then look to see where it expands from there. 
Well, and, you know, and maybe we don't, maybe you don't want to have a short form because we don't have near the number of employees that a city like Otsego has. Um, but, you know, do, it just depends. Do you want, you know, if your public works guys are out there and they identify a problem or see something they think is a problem, then, I mean, we're going to be required to use the long form list or a list uh, that we um, work with Shane on. So, uh, my, I, my I concern is that, that, that somebody who's building in our community has something that they can say. I'm done. It's, it's pretty clear. I mean, right now, the short list from Otsego says, do you have this? Yes or no. Do you have this? Yes or no. Right. And I, I want to make sure people walking into a project know up front, I have this and I'm good. Yeah. And, and I, what, what I get frustrated with is things get added that, oh, we kind of forgot this. I, I have most of it in my head, but I forgot about this. Or we need this. It always can feel like we're adding to it instead of saying I knew everything up front and I, if I didn't meet the mark, it's because I didn't do it. I saw it here and didn't do it. It wasn't that, oops, surprise, there's something else that's on this list. We thought it was going to be five, but it's seven. Yeah. I'm going to give you my $2,000. You're going to give me the checklist. When I get this all right. saying yes, you're going to give me this $2,000 back. Right. And, and that way, the residents can say, yeah, I, I did that, or I'm not surprised. I, I knew... Item, item four. Joe's going. <laughs> How much you get? How much was your check? I was saying to Joe, there wasn't two thousand dollars there. <laughs> um, but if the homeowner decides to skip item four, then there's no surprise when you come back and say, "Well, item four is not done," because they know that ahead of time and they know the entire scope of it. This is everything we're going to be looking at. So the intent would be then that yeah, we can have a packet. To I mean, you can maybe go as far as to even have people initial every page because I guarantee you some people will say, I never saw that. I didn't see that in that 30-page packet. <clears throat> so, yeah. No, it would be good. So everybody's on the same page. Agreed. Because, yes, yeah, so we've got a uh, MS4 28 pages here. Yeah, can, can we not make it 28 pages? We can try. Okay. Well, the application packet, yeah, will probably be fairly expensive. But, but homeowners aren't responsible for everything on the MS4 requirements that we have here. The 28 pages don't apply to... For a single They apply family. to us as a city. And yeah. Yes, we have things like, that right. Lori's responsible for and Joe's responsible for and Shane's responsible for. Give them... Right. They have nothing to do with new Give homes. Give them six or eight things that they got to check off and call it good. Right. Better than what we've had today. All right, so council, again, let's uh, be recognized. What do we want to do here? I'll start with Planner Stockman. Uh, I think uh, Councilmember Alders had suggested since we've been going without this, you're saying you'd like to do something right now in the ordinance. What would it delay if we, in a month from now we address this and have the packet? So we're passing everything in one time. Um, well, Shane's not going to be ready to have these other amendments until no the fall because he's uber busy. All right, so if we um, wait till fall, what, what is that? Uh... Well, I mean, it's building season now, but if that, you know, that's a risk you've taken for quite a few years already. Um, you know, maybe we put together a, a, a list for the single family homes and because the current MS4 three-page long version already applies to uh, non-residential. Okay, so non-residential is covered. Non-residential Residential, covered. if we have a, a lot of building, we can put together a, a short form so they know what they're getting into and they don't have any surprises. I recommend that we try to move forward with that. Can, can that be done by July meeting? Yes, I can update the ordinance, the short form, and the actual agreement for next month. All right, Council, is that all right? Can we uh, update the short, that we engage Liz to update the short form, 
uh, the ordinance and the agreement for the July council meeting. For non-commercial residential properties. Right. Correct. Yeah, the, the commercial res uh, commercial properties are already covered. Okay. So we're good with that. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to uh, direct planner Stockman accordingly. Then. Is it a motion or is it tabled till next month until she gets brings back more data? Well, we motion to direct her to do that. We're okay. engaging her to spend money. So, so we, uh, if we uh, update their short form, update the ordinance, and what was the third item? The agreement. The agreement. All right, so we have a motion to engage Liz to do those three things for the July meeting. Joel, did you? Joel's got it. Bring it. I, uh, I recommend, I make a motion that Liz uh, update our um, MS4 permit and grading, landscaping, erosion, escrow control, um, and update the short form, update the ordinance, and update the agreement, and bring it back for the next council meeting. I'll okay. second it. Motion second. Any other discussion? Planner Stockman, is it clear what uh, what the deliverable is for July? It is clear, thank you. Okay. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Anything else we need to talk about uh, Continued. on your little checklist there? From your discussion with March. No, that, that's adequate. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Well, we're within five minutes of plan here. Let's see if we can keep moving. Discussion uh, training dates for planning and zoning commission members. Uh, yes, if, you, if you, that's yours. Okay. Uh, Mary Council, I'm just trying to get some dates together that we can engage um, Attorney Ruby and Planner Stockman to educate the new Planning and Zoning Commission members, council and staff on planning procedures. What's the month looking like here? Let's see, the B and Z meets on the 22nd this month, mm -hmm. two weeks from today. And we have a meeting on Tuesday the 15th. 7 p.m. workshop. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainbow. Um, to Ms. Stockman, what, what do we currently have on the agenda for P&Z on the 22nd? We have the revised plans for the CST site. Um, is that the which of the two pieces is that? That is the specific site development for the building and okay. the store, the outdoor storage. The storage, okay. Yeah. And then we make well, no, it's past the deadline, so we don't have anything else right now. Okay, I would suggest that be one of the dates then. Hmm. And and on that, what happened with the. Um, the subdivision, the, Plat the was, platting of that was passed, right? Right, that got moved okay. forward, but we they submitted revised plans. Okay, so, so we'll, that's why we the intent would it. be to send the two to council at the same time. All right, that's why it's not on our agenda today. Yeah, right? I thought it was all taken care of at the PNC. That's why. Right. right. Yeah, you, you remembered right. That'd be a good opportunity since the uh, commission's already got that on their calendar. Uh, we'd like, uh, obviously, council and staff to have the same training as well. So, um, Mr. Mayor, Planner Stockman, keep in mind you might have quite a group of 
neighbors attending again? I would, I would fully expect that we would. I mean, it just extends, extends the length of the meeting is all. So, so the question I have is... Um, Can we adjourn the meeting and do the training afterwards? Yes. What, what did you say? Adjourn the meeting and do the training It'd be afterwards. two separate meetings. The, the question oh, right, is how, right. when do we start? Because, because the training won't be done in an hour and you're going to have people filtering in for the CST meeting. So do we... Um, how is that, that noticed? If I recall, I think Dale closed the public hearing, though. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily have to let people speak mm -hmm. unless they've submitted something. No, we ask people to submit in writing. Mm -hmm. Right. And we contact the office. Lori, have people been contacting you? Mm -hmm. There's been a few emails um, from a couple people, but no, I haven't had any calls or anything. Be possible to uh, to have those copied to us so that we can be not be surprised at the meeting because mm -hmm. I've had some people that I've run into at other meetings for the county that happen to live in that neighborhood and they want to suddenly they they never paid attention before at those meetings and now they want to talk well so one or two of the residents that were at the meeting were reaching out to um, the administrator in Oak Grove they emailed the applicant directly and both of those people contacted me and Oak Grove said they had no issues with it at all, which is why he didn't hear from me initially. It's an appropriate land use, mm -hmm. residential against residential. So anyway, uh, but the applicant was very brief in uh, her responses and she just shared that with me. So I will in turn share with you. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainbow. To Ms. Stockman, are the people that are continuing to reach out to whomever um, still on the wrong path of what they believe is being applied for there? Uh, let's just say they're grasping at straws. Okay. Because there's no real, I mean, we've done everything correctly mm -hmm. with notices, with, you know, sharing the whole thing with this neighboring city and they're just frustrated and, of course, yeah. don't like change like a yeah. lot of projects. But The yeah, residential neighborhood developed and people thought that was going to be a farm field forever. And they should have bought it and keep it as a farm field. Um, you know, when I've, when I've driven through there and I've driven different times of the day and times of the night, um, the homes that are going to go in behind them, mm -hmm. that's larger properties than what they're on. Right. You know, I, mm -hmm. it just, and they're just, for whatever reason, they have this idea in their mind that what they were going to do elsewhere is going to happen here. And I think it's very clear that right. that isn't going to happen here. Right. And a lot of times it's just not understanding the process. And mm -hmm. So the, the question is can that meeting be moved to an earlier time to accommodate training? Uh, so do the training first, you mean? Oh, do the public hearing first and then... Do the, do the rest of that meeting first. If the public hearing is closed, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's simply going to be communicating to the planning and zoning and they're going to make a recommendation. Now, obviously, you've got three new members who are going to be asked to vote on something that they were all here at the last meeting, but this is fair, going to be brand new to them before their training. <laughs> Throw them in so the we, stand right away. <laughs> Yeah. So we, we have the opportunity to try and fit in some basic training sometime between now and then um, or have that meeting and then follow it up with training, as much training as we can accommodate on that day. In which case, if we started at 6 o'clock with the meeting and try and get it done within an hour, that's the only thing on the agenda. Mm -hmm. We and can certainly do that and schedule the meeting at 6 because we haven't posted anything yet. What's the council think about that? And then obviously, so that nobody is, is concerned that we're trying to sneak one by, we'd have to communicate broadly that to the people that are involved right now that that meeting was moved up. 
So that way, to me, it makes sense because the majority of, you know, all of the planning and zoning people are expected to be here. Quite often, council members are here. Lori's going to be here. And police is available at that time. And do we know um, the due date on Ellen yet? Ellen will be returning on the 21st. Okay. So, what's council think about that, Mr. Mayor? Councilor Raymond. I, I I like the thought of starting the PNC at six, making sure the affected parties understand that. Um, at seven o'clock, start with the training, go for as long as we can, and if we need to schedule another meeting, we have all the parties involved there. I mean, if we, we try to another calendar. Yeah, I mean, we can't really plan for, we can't, we don't know what PNZ's schedule is right now to try to put a meeting in for them in the next two weeks. You know, they, mm -hmm. they know they have one the 22nd. Let's use that time and then look at it at, the, at that night to see what we need going forward and everybody will be there and have their calendars. So how long do we think this training is going to take? Are we thinking an hour and a half, two hours? Oh, I'm going to guess at least two hours. Two. Yeah. Seven to nine, yeah. which is, again, typically when they'd be at the PNZ meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> not, not typically for council members. To, yeah, I'm just trying to get the perspective. I mean, I know we're going to communicate that the meeting time has changed, but I also know that there's a ton of people that may not know that and just know that the meeting is the third Tuesday of the month at 7 o'clock and they're going to come here and the, the discussion topic that they wanted to hear about is going to be done. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That we, would, we, so, would, we would need to communicate. The, the deal here is you've got some representatives um, of the concerned parties in Oak Grove that are... I totally agree, but I'm just saying it's like Perception wise, it's gonna, it may look like, even though we tried not to because we communicated it out there on the website and we put it out there, it, it's gonna, it may appear like, hey, we pulled this thing. So is that that's, risk? That's, that was my concern. Yeah. yeah. Is that risk worth the other risk of saying, hey, we're gonna start at seven, it should be done by eight, training is gonna go from eight to 10, and then we're gonna do schedules from there. Mr. Mayor. Option. Oh. I think that would be a safer approach. Mm -hmm. Unless, Mr. Mayor, if we re notice the people that were originally noticed, you know, I, I uh, send them an agenda or something. And, and uh, I, I think that even a re noticing, first of all, that's mailings, that's, that's extra work for mm -hmm. staff, yeah. and it still is going to look like what are you pulling? I, I, and it's the not. Like, Alders, it's, yeah, I'm sorry. And, and it's not like it, it's, you know, it's a bit of a hot topic for the community, right? So if it was a, I would say, normal, hey, we're going to, somebody wants to come in and split off five acres off of 20, it's fairly low risk. This feels like it's a little bit more of a. <coughs> There's already a, a suspicion that we pulled a fast one just by changing our comp plans. And we want to be as transparent as possible. All right. So then we communicate to the planning and zoning and, and obviously. Linda, when she comes back, and staff, that at this point we would, uh, the intention is we get one hour to, should be sufficient to cover one topic uh, that's been fairly well covered right now. We have details we'll present, and the planning zone will be asked to make a recommendation by 8 o'clock. Um, anybody who's coming to speak will be asked to not repeat. Um, we had asked last time. Pick a spokesperson to reflect your position so we're not repeating things. Uh, but let people know. And we want to broadcast that as, as broadly as we can. It's a one hour meeting. It's the only thing on the agenda. Come and say your piece at 8 o'clock, we have another meeting. And then we communicate to the uh, planning zoning commissioners that plan on staying around. Uh, and that is contingent on Bob being available that night. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Greenberg. Are the new planning and zoning members expected to be um, attending in the audience on the 22nd or actually up here? Up here. Okay. So actively participating as 
I would expect it'd probably be fairly quiet, except for maybe Marty. <laughs> Mar Marty is, uh, it's, it's ironic, Marty went through this exact same thing down in Champlain with a building we built years ago. Oh. And, and we had this acreage, we put up a 300,000 square foot building and they thought it was their park forever. That's what the realtors told them. Mm -hmm. And it was literally across the street. And their view of the sunset and their dog run and everything disappeared. And he was in Champlain on the other side of that. So he's very familiar with what they're feeling. And so I think he will be up to speed fairly quickly. So, good. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainbow. I, I think though that our new commissioners need to understand that if they're not comfortable with the vote, they no. don't have to. They can abstain so, okay. so mm -hmm. that they know yeah. that. Totally agree. First yeah. meeting out, it's like... Yeah, I mean... Whew. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. That's, and and that, that, that's not saying that they don't understand anything. It's just better safe than sorry, and if they're not comfortable, then they don't, they don't vote. Yeah, I, I think that's, that would be mm -hmm. great to... Yeah communicate that at the beginning of or before they vote. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, yeah, it, this is day one, right? Mm -hmm. See how it's done. Here. So is council all right with me checking with Bob Rupi real quick since we're here and making the decision? And I have a question for Ms. Drake. Mm -hmm. um, at, at the PNZ meeting, you had asked people to sign up for emails. Yes. Have you, how many did? Uh, I think I have six, five or six. Out of all of those, okay. Yeah. Yeah, council's okay with it. I was just thinking that we could email those key people and say, please submit your questions Mr. Ruby, right Yeah. Ahead of time. Uh, question for you. Check your calendar. Are you available on two weeks from tonight, June 22nd? Tuesday, June 22nd. like to start training at 8 o'clock. We have a PNZ meeting that we expect to go from 7 to 8, and then two hours of training our new PNZ members and council members. Yep. All right. 8 to 10. Second, from seven to eight, will be the planning and zoning. From eight to ten, ten or so will be council and P and Z staff training. Staff training. Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Rainbow. Um, I may be out of town, but what I would do is call in. Okay. I have to get permission to travel, and then I do leave. We'll be gone. And Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Rainbow, um, could I ask that um, I originally a, a while back sent out the information I got from I think it's Fusion Inc. Correct. Um, as far as the training that they offer, which is online, that that information be um, in the packet um, Just for the, the training packet, so that we can look at those to decide what um, which of those items are. Of benefit. There were some that were there, like TIF districts. We don't have that, so we don't need to take those trainings. Um, All right. So you're asking that uh, the fusion information be included in the training packet. Correct. Okay. 
Good with that, Laurie? Okay. okay. Anything else on the uh, training dates at this point? So at this point, if it, it appears with what uh, Bob is presenting, it's going to take longer than that, or commissioners have mem uh, questions, uh, we can reschedule when everybody's there and follow up date. Sounds good. All right. Is the council okay with me sending emails to the people that shared their email at that last month's meeting to indicate, uh, and we can put on the website, please submit any questions before the meeting? Correct. Right. And we can, uh, council okay with that? I'm okay with it. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Greenberg. In that email, should we include that that meeting's going to be from 7 to 8, so they know there's a... Sure. Eight meeting is a hard stop at 8 o'clock. And then, I don't know if she wants to add that there'll be a training meeting in the same space right after that, so they know that something else is abutted up to it. Should they be informed of that, or? No. We'll tell us at the meeting, you need to say, say it's 7 to 8. The, oh, meeting, the meeting ends, and we'll have to clear the room, we have another meeting scheduled. Right. You're can... free to talk in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a public hearing, so right. we will take questions ahead of time, you won't be allowed to speak. Unless, you know, the chair authorizes it or whatever. Mr. Mayor? How's my rainbow? Yeah, on the, on the PNZ agendas, is floor, light, floor items are not allocated time, so. They're not supposed to be. It keeps, yeah. keeps showing up. Yeah. Does it? Because there's, there's no reason for it. They're either there for a public hearing when it's yeah. allotted for, or mm -hmm. it's not germane to what they're discussing that night, so it's. It, we tried to take it off previously. Well, that was, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainbow. I believe that was part of the revisions that we made. Yes. So it, it should be off the agenda. All right. So we'll go with the uh, June 22nd. Twenty second. Twenty second. All right, uh, next time was when I moved down there at the Ebony and uh, Garnett project. Um, some of the uh, feedback on that project on Ebony, uh, Shane had recommended, if you guys have driven that road, from 185th, shortly after you get on to Ebony, there's a patch we did a number of years ago that's held up reasonably well. But the concern was for people that do this for a living that you're now putting blacktop before, new blacktop and, and new base before the patch and after the patch. And they may not uh, flow well together long term. So the recommendation was do the base work, ground up the material that's there even though it's relatively new, and do all the base work and then do the top coats all in one pass so you have a better mm -hmm. product. Uh, we've already put the, the bids out, we've already awarded the bids. Um, so this would be something that would take out of the planning and zoning, I mean the uh, road and bridge, uh, additional monies that we put aside. So we would have to get an estimate on what additional cost that would be and then communicate that to Molnau Trucking that uh, that would be part of the project that the city would be paying for. Um, and we'd communicate to the residents that we're picking it up, it's not an additional charge to them. What are the, not knowing what those costs are at this point, what are the thoughts to the council? We have to move quickly because if Molnau can start their project quickly, they need to know this too. So. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Green. Is there a way we can get a quick estimate from Molinau to find out what that might be? I would, I would assume so. Um, and we, we could get we can get ballpark um, from a variety of places, but I don't know what you know, we we would have to assume that the city's picking it up, and the Molnau wasn't going to uh, pillage us. So we can uh, we can say depending on on uh, not to exceed. I wouldn't even know what number to put in there right now. Right, same. Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Rainbow. Um, 
Do we think Shane would have an idea of a not to exceed? Well, he, obviously, he, uh, he was right on with his engineer's estimate. Yeah. I mean, everybody came in right exactly, or just a little higher than Shane, mm -hmm. except for two people who came in $50,000 less. Mm -hmm. So I would say his, his, uh, his estimate would be reasonable. Mm -hmm. So one way of doing this would be to have the council to approve it based on a reasonable number from Shane that is in the uh, road and bridge budget that exists in the road and bridge budget, and we could get together for a quick meeting uh, if we can pull together a, a quorum to approve this. Because I can't ask you to give me a blank, give us a blank check because we don't know what that is. But if we have a reasonable number, we can have the council vote on it. <clears throat> can you have it by the 15th? By the 15th? Yeah, I would assume so. Let's get a number and decide first up on the 15th. Yeah, that just has to be added to the notice because it's something different. All right. So at this point, we'll get uh, we'll get a number from Shane if we can get something from Molnow, and have a number that we can discuss on the fifteenth. We'll add that to our special meeting <coughs> notice, and we'll get that done first. Yeah. I would assume it would be relatively quick. Say yes or no, but it, it seems to make sense to the integrity of the project. Agreed. Okay. All right. So, um, Lori, you want to uh, contact Shane and see if we can get numbers from him and Molnow? Yes, yeah. All right. Council agrees? Agreed. Agreed. All right. Yeah. All right. Recycle center attendant. So, we have a recommendation. Um, my concern, going back to our discussion, and, and it's, it's one of those things where I, I want to be careful that we're not stepping on too many toes here. Um, but one of, one of the things that Joel, uh, Councilman Greenberg, had mentioned when we were talking about this previously, that this person has to have a, a certain bit of gravitas and professionalism because they're going to be facing residents who may or may not agree with what they're told about needing to pay for things, or needing to take things back home that are trash that we're not taking. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of diplomacy. Um, and uh, I'm not able with what I've got here in front of me to understand if this person has what it takes. I'm, I'm looking at little information I have. They applied as a general labor with the city back in April. Um, eventually it was proposed that maybe they'd be good in the recycling center. I would assume when you and Joe, when, when Laurie and Joe sat down that you went through the job description and, and explained what they'd be doing. Unfortunately, we're the hiring body and we've never met this person. So it's, it's unfortunate they couldn't be here to at least help us understand what we're getting into here. Um, but looking at the, the track record here, there was an undetermined amount of employment at the Recycling Center in 2018. We don't know if that was days, weeks, or months. Um, and reason for leaving there. And then undetermined amount at another location the year after that, and nothing in the past year, and no references. So it's really hard for me to give a, an endorsement when this is all I have to go on. Being that this is going to be somebody who interacts with residents and non-residents alike throughout every day they're on the job, three days a week. And thinking about you know, what Joel experienced, what Dan experienced, what we've experienced in that, um, it's hard for me to take a look at this and picture that match. We did go over the whole job description with him, and he would be very capable of handling any resident that comes in. He's fine with um, setting rules and standards and has experience working in a recycling center. That's why we asked him if he was interested in this position, as he is looking to get out from under his brother, working under him. He would like to have a professional job. 
What type of work are they doing? Um, I don't remember what his brother's... We didn't really go into detail of what he's doing for his brother. It's more of a marketing type of a, a plan that he's working on. It's nothing to do with recycling, though. But he does have experience in recycling. And I understand what you're saying about having the ideal person in that position, but I, I have to say applications are not coming in the door for any positions right now. Mr. Mayor, um, to Ms. Strike, what did he do? It's a general labor for B and E recycling. What were his duties there? He was doing the same types of things we'll be asking up here: sorting okay. and meeting with residents as they okay. come in, uh, taking payments, and pretty much the exact same job he's doing. We'll be asking of him now. I don't know that he was doing much of the um, the like, mattress intake. There's a few things that were different for him, but he also no, it's not a run a bailer in the cardboard. And uh, I would expect that our floor sweeper would actually be utilized. We can have them use that. That's, that's, you know, if we have somebody there 24 hours a week, I would expect that the general appearance, the expectation needs to be communicated that because you're there, we should be on top of things all the time. And if it's, if it's slow, then that's where the floor cleaning and the... Mm -hmm. Time to lean, time to clean. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Greenberg. I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable knowing that um, yeah. Kelly has had some experience with this already. Uh, it's uh, a dirty environment, um, and you have to know a little bit about uh, what's acceptable and what's not. Um, I don't know if Kelly actually took payment in his prior employment. He stated that he did. So I, that makes me, um, I don't know, makes me happy. <laughs> I like that, that he's already done this to some degree. Um, so he, he's already had to experience some of those things that happen at recycling centers. Um, educating people, um, sorting dirty stuff, running the baler, um, which takes know-how and some physical strength. Um, so those are all encouraging signs. Uh, I also know that the labor market is tight. People are offering some of the weirdest incentives out there I've seen to try and entice people off the couch and to sever their uh, relationship with the unemployment. <laughs> so um, I understand all that and that makes me a lot more comfortable with what I'm looking at here. Um. Other comments from council? The, um, the city has a probationary period. I, you know, I think that one of the uh, problems we had in the past when we did some public works hiring that didn't work out and we got stuck with some um, unemployment for an extended period of time. That actually looked pretty good in the interview process, and it went sour fairly quickly afterwards. And, and uh, as we always say, it's always easier to uh, not hire than to dismiss. But maybe in this market it isn't. But um, with the probationary period, again, it's it's hard not having ever met the person to know what uh, what we're getting here. So. But with a probationary period, if it's not working out the way we, we wanted, we would have to make sure that we're quick to evaluate. And if it can't be corrected and, and amended, then quick to separate, whether we had somebody else to do it or not. So, so Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainville. The questions I have for Ms. Strike is, um, so is, is uh, Joe Glaze going to be supervising them? Yes. That's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So he'll be responsible for documentation of um, what, what is being done, you know, what's expected of them, did it get, uh, is, it, is what was expected of them completed, completed correctly? Um, will you be responsible for the balancing of the dollars versus the, what's taken in? So what the plan is, we would have a sheet that, a sheet they would leave at the marking on what was taken in during the day, 
They'll have paid stickers, which needs to match up with what was in, brought in. Everything should have a paid sticker on it with the dollar amount right. listed. So that would be checked every day. Right. Well, will that sheet also, so on Monday night, if somebody comes in at midnight and drops three washers off, mm -hmm. um, or staff goes out and finds three washers in the, in the ditches, mm -hmm. um, will that sheet incorporate those drop non-paid drop-offs so that we know when the, the company comes to pick up, we know exactly how many they're picking up, and, and we know we've recouped more money than, right. yep. okay. And that will happen, or there'll be some that aren't oh, yes. because they yeah. were dropped off well, I, mm -hmm. We do have cameras inside and outside mm -hmm. the facility, so yeah. we can watch if somebody's dropping off inside or out without permission, mm -hmm. and the activities going on inside. Well, in this case, it's only open when it's staffed. So, yeah, right. so we, we should eliminate a lot of a lot of the stuff that we did when when council was staffing. Mm -hmm. So that that certainly would be helpful. Um, and if it makes council feel better, I can have them come to the next city council meeting, and you can meet him before he gets offered a position. But then we're another month. That's until July. Yeah. And we're at risk that he's going to find employment somewhere else. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's been a few months and, yeah. and we had to come back to him so, yeah. so it's he possible is, he I'm, is currently working for his brother he doesn't dislike it but he knows it's time different. for him to move to something different <clears throat> okay. I just think it, it, it's nice to know I've seen something I, I mentioned in my memo to you I mean all the time Jeremiah was here I, I never met him I, mm -hmm. I'd see the truck over there and, and want to go in and, and meet him, be introduced to him, and then he'd be gone again. So I didn't realize he was only working morning hours. So, <clears throat> so it's just nice when you're actually the hiring body that to actually see the person before you do that. Um, the, in, in talking with the league, because I mentioned about the bonding, and uh, their recommendation is, the, they said the one that has to be bonded is you. The clerk has been, are you? Mm -hmm. I believe so. When I was hired. Mm -hmm. Who, how did that happen? Did, Wasn't that through my employment? You've been fingerprinted? League said it's, it's, a, it's a process it's, it's including a process. fingerprinting. And, yeah. I was not fingerprinting. And they, they were saying that because um, the, the LMC IT uh, requires it, actually the statute requires it. Mm -hmm. Typically the, the cities pay for it. The clerk that I was talking to that's now a reference person for the, the League Insurance Trust Fund saying, yeah, typically there's a, there's a process including fingerprinting and mm -hmm. there's a whole process. So, so if it hasn't been done, I said, I don't recall that we've ever done it, no. then we probably haven't really done it. So, so who did you talk to at the League? Um, mm -hmm. Joyce Hottinger at the Trust Fund. <clears throat> And she didn't have a lot to say other than she used to be the, the clerk at Hastings and she said that, yeah, you have to, the requirements are bonding for the clerk treasurer. Mm -hmm. And I talked that. to the um, attorney over there. One of the attorneys on staff said that bonding can be very expensive. It's a lengthy process. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you bond for one employee, you should be bonding anyone who's taking in money, which would be Lisa, myself, this, uh, and and what, what she was saying was um, it has to do with the amounts of money. And, and I, I would see where somebody was covering for you, because we're talking about millions of dollars as opposed to hundreds of dollars. Yeah, and the Recycle Center is probably maybe $100. $150 a day. Yeah, what, what, day. The, what the league was saying in, in that case, what they would like to see is uh, uh, rigid or, or uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. you, know, and, you know, if you're handing out paid stickers, are they numbered right. so that they're not, you know, yep. if you store, destroy one, you put it on the table and say, I put a different one in there. So and the thing that they said we do require is that there's a double check audit system. Mm -hmm. Whoever is verifying the appliances and the dollars has to be somebody other than the person turning in the money. And we do that inside the office too. And I said, I'm sure that's our There's practice already. Two eyes on everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they're just saying, make it make it hard to do wrong and easy to do right. 
and so a different set of eyes is verifying that this many came in, so that we're saying at the end of the month, this many were paid for, this many got collected, they should always manage. So, so Mr. Mayor, Council Member Rainer. I would move the, the hiring of Kelly Jocelyn, um, effective as soon as you could reach him, um, for employment uh, in our recycling center for the Tuesday, Thursdays, 11 to 7, and Saturdays, 8 to 4. Um. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Raymond. Uh, no, I, 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 I have something after the fact. That's okay. Fine. So obviously, I, I think um, the policy and procedure will be critical. Um, I, I think now that we have somebody actually in there doing it. We can start talking about lights and signage and some things to actually improve it. But uh, right now, it would be it would be good to not have the mess we have and, and not require all the extra time for Joe and Eric that don't have it to give. So. And and if for whatever reason it doesn't seem to be a good fit, that the probationary period. Be. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Councilmember Greenberg. I would just make sure then that the prob probationary period is made clear to Kelly then. And that probationary period is right now what? Is it 60 or 90? It's 90 days. 90 days. Okay. All right. It can be, Any other it can comments? Be, Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainbow. It, it can be shorter. If, 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 you know, at the day seven, you finally said like, this isn't working. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it's up to 90 days, yeah, typically. Yeah, to 90, yeah. Right. So we wouldn't have a consistent every single day mm -hmm. So so a question for council, um, Mr. Mayor. Council Mayor Rango. Question for council is um, would it be smart of us to um, offer the ability to have some training prior to starting the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday? Um, you know, a, a day or two of Joe thought a day or two. Um, to get his feet wet for offer training to to Kelly, Kelly. yeah. Prior to when residents are coming in and mm -hmm. yeah. and actually, so that he's action. comfortable with the system sure. and the equipment and what's expected so of much. him. We can certainly do that. Um, otherwise, our plan was that whoever starts would be shadowing either Joe or Eric for the day in the recycle center. And they'll have a cash box or something. That yes. They'll do in-person training. But it could be, you know, before the doors are open if that's, yeah. I, if council would prefer that. I, I would, myself, would prefer prior to the doors being open because he's got to be able to um, hit the ground running. And if you're trying to learn on the day you're it, trying to hit the ground running. It certainly running. wouldn't hurt to have the first day on the job have yeah. shadowing somebody too, but I think yeah. knowing where everything is, knowing where the keys are, knowing... Yeah. What to do if, if something goes haywire? I mean, when we were doing recycling day, and uh, that baler has to be even Joe and Eric. Eric was showing Joe how do you have to whack it a certain way to get it to open or close up properly. Mm -hmm. and, um, now, hopefully, he's tall enough he can get the thing. That was one of the things I, I had to wear the tall tennis shoes to get the door down. But, but <laughs> and, and and this is one of the things that I, I think we need to now. They're bringing somebody new into it. When I went over there and they, Joe and Eric were struggling with getting it to work, they have a bypass on a safety mechanism where they slide something in to get it to hook, and we can't have a new person doing that. So no. If the machine needs to be fixed, it needs to be fixed. No, mm -hmm. no exactly. bypasses. Here's how you trick the machine. So. Yeah, yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> That's That's not, they don't do that in maintenance? <laughs> we can't do that. All right, any other comments? So we have a motion and a second to uh, approve the uh, making an offer to Kelly Jocelyn. I still think it would be good to have him come before the council so we at least I'll meet him officially. Uh, $15 an hour, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 11 to 7, and Saturdays, 8 to 4. Pre-training with staff and then uh, shadowing on the first day or two on the, on the job. Any other comments? 
Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Okay. Mayor. Councilor Rainbow. Just up for Council's consideration is um, this issue of bonding, um, and we're not quite sure if, if uh, Ms. Strike is bonded. Could we ask Ms. Strike to verify if she is or isn't? And if, it, if she isn't, um, what is the process for her to be bonded? And do we also look to have our deputy chief, excuse me, deputy clerk bonded also? And I'm assuming the so process I, is the same, but the cost associated. Yeah, you know, and uh, when I asked that, they, they didn't say, I said, well, if the deputy clerk is filling in for the clerk, and the clerk needs to be bonded, mm -hmm. the deputy clerk's running the same monies. Mm -hmm. That would seem to be a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, so what is there? I know it did come up in the league training. They, that one of the things they said when we were responsible for budgeting is they did say clerk treasurers must be. Must be I think the, um, the responsibility falls on my shoulders if something goes wrong. While well, you're done. Okay. okay. So that um, might be why she said that they didn't see the other people being bonded because you were right. and they worked for you. Yeah. Or the answer to you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item was seasonal help parks. That's what I had anyway. Uh, Mayor Council, I have an application for an applicant who came forward. I know that our uh, posting said 18 years or older is a requirement. I have not received any uh, applications, but I did have somebody come in and fill out an application, although she's not 18. Uh, she does have a driver's license and she's interested. She's run the equipment. She runs a zero-turn lawnmower currently in her own, on her own property. And I showed her the lawnmower. She was not phased by it at all. She said there's no problem. She knows how to run it. It would take, of course, training to make sure she's comfortable with the city's zero turn versus her own. She'd be doing the 16 footer? No, we would have her on the, the not the big one, the big wings. Okay. Non, the non winger. Yeah. And then uh, weed pulling and weed whipping in the parks. Okay. So my intent is for council to, although I know she's not old enough, to let me know your thoughts on it. Again, as, as part of my discussion, I. I didn't realize when I sent to you the bonding and I didn't know this. So when I was talking about bonding, I asked about this as well with the league. Um, because I know that there is a restriction on minors using power equipment in the past. Um, in May, May 28th of 2020, the state amended that. Uh, minors are restricted from operating any power-driven machinery. However, effective May 28, 2020, minors who are at least 16 years of age can operate lawn care equipment, including trimmers, weed cutters, and machines designed to cut grass and weeds that meet safety specifications of American National Standards Institute and Outdoor Power Equipment Institute, including push and ride on mowers for cities, golf courses, resorts, and municipal grounds, provided Prior to operating lawn care equipment, the 16 or 17 year olds is trained in a safe operation of each type of equipment they will be operating. Uh, the underage person wears protective personal equipment, including but not limited to safety glasses, hearing protection, gloves, safety vest, and work boots when operating the lawn care equipment. The city ensures all safety rules and instructions provided in the equipment operator's manual are followed, including uh, they're really concerned about uh, slopes, any operating carry equipment on slopes created and recommended in the operator's manual. I don't think we have slopes in any of our parks, well, the, unless she's or, doing Morton Farm. Yeah. Or the, 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 the septic out here is the slope. She may have but it. Oh no, it's so up they, against the building, our septic, yeah, right over septic, here. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that would be beyond is it, me. Is it, yeah, you know. um, and the city ensures that all safety equipment is in place and operation on all lawn equipment, mm -hmm. including any rollover protection, seat belts, operator presence, control systems, interlocks, guards, and shields. Um, 
So it is legal as of a year ago with those stipulations, and that's what they said. Yes, it's legal, the, the statute was changed, but make sure you have the proper training and proper equipment in place. Exactly. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Greenberg. Uh, Lori, I would uh, strongly suggest that she be equipped with um, safety glasses, hearing protection, and shoes be required. No sandals allowed. Well, I would probably want pants too if you're on cutting. Mm -hmm. so, but so, yeah, so okay. they've got safety glasses, hearing gloves, safety vest. I think everybody uses their reflective. I purchased the safety vests and t shirts last year for staff, and we have plenty small. Those aren't worn out yet. All right. So as long as the equipment is uh, hasn't been modified to be other than the original equipment, we're in good shape. So, Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Rainbow. I know I had some questions on this, and my questions were based on the fact that we had nothing in front of us. And prior practice was that we hired people that were 18, and there's been change in the law. Um, for 16 and 17 year olds that weren't in place last time. The council um, itself has never hired anybody under 18 years old, whether, and, and not you included in this, Lori, but whether previous staff hired people that weren't 18, that's, uh, we didn't know that. We never saw applications, we didn't know that. And so I'm just, I was just looking out for, um, to, that, that the city is protected, that we're not violating state law, we're not violating labor laws or OSHA laws or anything like that. Um, I think she, you know, given the, the experience she has, um, she'll probably do very well at it. And, and I don't, I'm not, um, I, I just want to make sure that we knew that what, what the stipulations were. And, and if we have to purchase all that safety equipment, that's fine. And, and actually, we probably should be purchasing it for our recycling um, employee also. Our, our uh, steel-toed shoes, um, the safety glasses, um, if they're working around things, that they also should be um, equipped with those same items. We, we don't want to send our employees out not being protected. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor Greenberg. I agree with Mary. Um, steel-toed shoes might be a good idea in that recycling center, yeah. especially if that bale comes out and were to land on someone's yeah. foot. The thing weighs a thousand pounds. Well, I, and and uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, my rainbow. personal experience. My former husband um, worked a baling machine, cardboard baling machine, and they were whoopee cacking it, and it came down and cut right through his steel toes, and cut his toe off. <sighs> so you, you got to you, you can't play games around those things. <laughs> so if we can protect them. Um, Typically, it's, in those types of yeah. situations, you get the uh, um, the uh, it's not just the steel toe because steel toes will cut off. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just, the, uh, there's slice. There, there's another type of boot for crushing it. Yeah. The, the other one is in the metals, <sighs> and there's metatarsals as well. So the metatarsal is yeah. is probably what we want in that one. Yeah. Because in the, some of the metal that gets thrown in there is fairly heavy too, but mm -hmm. certainly the bales. Metatarsal, generally, you, your foot will still be in tough shape afterwards, but it won't take your toes off. So, mm -hmm. uh, so just for clarification then, would you prefer that I purchase steel-toed shoes for the seasonal maintenance lawnmower if she doesn't have any? Yes. I, I think it's our requirement. It's a requirement that, from what I understand the mayor reading, it is a requirement that we supply that. It says work boots. That, you know, right now, yeah. Joe and the gang use just mm -hmm. they, do they have steel Typically toes? for a lawnmower and weed whipping, I wouldn't think you would need steel toes. I agree when they're working around steel and there's, right. a, there's a drop hazard. I, I would say work right boots for them. I mean, leather shoes or work boots, I could see as, I mean, I, your comment straight up. They can't have flip flops on. Well, I don't allow Joe and Eric to wear flip flops. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or tennis shoes. Lori shoes. Yeah, I so I, I think I think for the, the park it's a work boots, and for the recycle it's a protective boots with metatarsal. Yeah, would we'll leave that up to Lori's discretion as to what's, the, what's appropriate. Where we buy our boots from, they'll be able to tell you that. Chaps. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. All right. So, with that understood and those uh, requirements by the state, uh, we have a motion. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainville. I would move that we uh, uh, hire, and I'm trying to remember if it was Morgan or Megan. Morgan. Morgan Alders is our part time uh, parks maintenance person. At, um, and I don't, you had emailed that stuff out, but I don't have it with it. Didn't, uh, I can't remember what the dollar amount was. Oh, um, that was 16. $16. Okay. $16 an hour. No more than 32 hours a week, and that Lori will um, investigate the appropriate safety equipment required. I second. Yeah, I'm going to probably hold off on voting <laughs> yeah. on this one. Did she say something about 24 hours a week? Is she available? She's available up to 25 hours a week. Yeah, right I was going to say I okay. thought it was 25. So. Okay. But what are is we... That, is that yeah. sufficient for what we need at this point? Or you just, you'll we take would, what you can and... We would gladly take 25 okay. hours a week of Okay. Right. Is, and, and it would be nice to also meet her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some of us might know her a little bit, but... Mm -hmm. It would be nice to meet her Take a chance. Well. So is she available up to 32 at a certain time frame, or? Uh, not at this time. Not at this time. Right okay. Now. Right. right now it's 24. 24. Okay. I didn't just with school, and I just and, and so somebody's canceled. What does that schedule look like? Obviously, weather has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna if if she's offered the position, we would sit down with her and have her exact times. I know she has basketball. She could. There was a couple days she couldn't come in until 10 in the morning. Okay. So. Joe and I looked over the hours and said we could make it work, and then we'll get a definite schedule once we are in the position. And if, if we find out, like last year, things are falling behind and we need more in either of these positions and qualified people. Raising my hand, yep. Okay. So if qualified people apply and you find there's more need, we'll talk about it then. Okay, any other comments? Mm -hmm. Seeing and hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Would like to abstain, feel free. I'll abstain on this one. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. One abstention. Uh, by the way, abstentions have to be legally because of conflict of interest. That's the only other time you're allowed to abstain. So. Feels like that fits. <laughs> it, it fits. Yeah, I'm just saying sometimes people just don't want to vote on it and they, they abstain, and that's the only legitimate is if there's a conflict of interest. And, this one's pretty clear cut. Uh, otherwise, the person has to explain their conflict. All right, uh, farmers market stipend clarification. Mayor Council, I, uh, the RCA, I just need a little clarification. The RCA was, RCA was clear in the fact that the stipends will be happening, but we never clarified or asked, I guess I should have asked, is that the beginning of the season they will get paid or the end of the season? It's over, they would get their checks. If it's the beginning of the season, I can add it to the claims for tomorrow to be paid out. If it's the end of the season, then we would wait till fall. I, I, I was under the impression it was the beginning of the season because that's part of the uh, the incentive that we had to get people. They've been doing the work since spring. They've, they've been having meetings and hiring people and stuff. So mm -hmm. I would say that uh, my understanding was it was the beginning of the season. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Rainville. And, and I submitted the, uh, Councilmember Blake and I submitted the, the RCA and it was effective with the 2021 market season and we are at the 21, 20, 2021 market season. So it has started. Be, should be now. Yeah. yeah. I'm just used to paying after the work's been done, so I want to make sure. Okay. And, and, and Council, um, thank you for checking on that, Lori. I'll try to make sure my RCAs are more specific. Um, 
I, I would think if we, going forward, if we have a big change in management, maybe we can have a conversation, the half and half, something like that. But these are people that have been with us and have um, performed and performed well and kept our market going. So uh, there's no other. All right. So that uh, that's clear then. Mm -hmm. Council agrees that stipends will go out as uh, this month's claim. This month's claims. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Else? Uh, we have one more thing. The uh, meeting next Tuesday. Oh, that's right. What are we doing next Tuesday? This is a meeting that we tried to do back in April, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, yeah. Liz, you had said you were preparing things for this meeting. I think um, it's imperative that we address. The confusion that we've been experiencing, and, and I know at one point when we were going to have the original meeting, uh, Lori had said that you were going to explain some of that confusion. But what we have is, is residents and commercial uh, businesses that are frustrated with the process. And one of the things that we've been trying to say since our abbreviated planning session back in uh, months ago was process is, is everything. If we get the process down, we avoid confusion. And we spent a lot of time tonight just talking about the, the MS4 checklist. What can we do that people know ahead of time what to expect, that they can look at a sheet of, of paper or a screen and say, I know exactly what's expected of me. And, and so process is a big part of it. How we're handling that process I think is, is needs to be discussed at that time too, because we we have complaints. Um, we have to say what's legitimate, and what are we going to do about it? And part of it is going to be the process. Part of it is the way we handle that process. So when people deal with with staff, whether it's you know, I expect when when Shane's out on the road project or his representatives out on the road project, there's a professionalism and a customer service that we as a council have an expectation that the residents are going to get treated a certain way when they come into the office. You, you, you've always said that. There's a, there's a way that people need to be um, counting on, that there's customer service, there's respect. I have to agree with what we're doing, but there has to be respect in this process. <coughs> and if our attorneys are involved, and in I've, I've said this in our prosecuting attorney, I want to know how we're being represented in court because that reflects us. He's not his own, he's contracted with us. And if he's not reflecting us, then he can't keep working for us. So all of our contractors know that. That, that the, as our representatives out there in the field, we need a process that's easy for everybody to understand in layman's terms, in lay people's terms, and that they're getting respected in the process, whether they agree with it or not, whether it's, it's the way they want it to go or not. And also, it, it's my personal opinion, um, and council can, we, we didn't get through this in our planning session yet, so we gotta get back to that. But what does customer service and respect look like? And I think in the public sector, um, it's important that we, again, my opinion is that we hold people's hands through a process that they haven't been through before. It's a little different when you're dealing with contractors that do this day in and day out. When you're dealing with residents who are, are doing something for the first time uh, or the occasional time, uh, and, and we've gone round about this, people want to use their properties in a way, it's our job to help them do that and understand, unless it's setting a negative precedent, unless it's in, in, imposing upon neighboring properties in a way that their value is diminished or they can't enjoy their property in the same way. And so to me, it's not just black and white, here's the rules. It's how can we help you understand this in lay people's terms and make sure that you can get start to finish with this with our help. And I think that's really what we need to be discussing. Now again, if the council doesn't want to do that, but we've, we've done this with our, our letters that go out to people with zoning, with code violations. Um, and I know it's not always easiest on staff. We've, we've got what I think, Liz, you call it the nicey-nice letter. 
that we send out first. You know, in some cities, it's just, here's the rules, you're violating them, there you go. We've tried to be um, as upfront as possible and transparent as possible, but also help people understand. And when you do that, a lot of times when people didn't know they're in violation and they say, sorry about that, I'll get it cleaned up. Those people that say, I really couldn't care le less what your rules are, then we have a process that eventually ends up in court. So I, I, I think that the process needs to be understood, communicating what respect looks like, what customer service looks like, and, and examples of what's been working and what hasn't been working, what we're going to do about it. So in a general sense, that's what I'm thinking Tuesday is. What was the council thinking when they're coming to this meeting? Because we can't just come to this meeting and just say, okay, let's chat. We have to have an objective in mind and, and so we know we've communicated effectively. So Mr. Mayor? Councilman Rainbow. Um, Back when we submitted our goals and objectives and vision and uh, for the city, um, and we've done nothing with those, um, one of my goals is that we um, look to hire an internal planner. I don't know if next Tuesday is the appropriate time to do that, but I think it's something that needs to be part of the overall conversation. Um, would it better serve our residents if we had an internal planner um, full-time employee, um, and I, I believe that would help s eliminate some of the question of every time I talk to a person, it costs me money, and I and they keep making me do more things, and it costs me more money. Um, we've used that path through, pass through system in everything we've done since we've been a township, um, but we are are growing. Um, We've got some growing pains here with the, with the planning, zoning processes. Um, and I think that that's something we need to look at is, is it time to, to hire our own planner? Hopefully that would make some of the, the costs associated be set. Um, all, all residents would pay for it, um, whether they use it or not, which is different than we do now. But in the long run, do we get happier clients or residents because they're not watching a bill mount up and mount up. Um, they're, they're made, depending on the item um, a, that, that's being requested, there may be some outside billing um, or a separate billing, um, but in other words, all the costs would be encompassed by a city employee. And, and so there hopefully would eliminate some of the surprises. Um, and, and, but I think and part, more, part of that is, is there would be outside cost, or sometimes it's attorneys, sometimes it's engineers, sometimes. Right. But it would be documented in such a way that, again, we don't have surprises and we don't have yeah. open checkbooks. Yeah. And, and I think our, our goal is to provide a service that's transparent to our residents, that, that they're comfortable with. Um, and and I've, I'll, you know, I, I think that's a thing to, t to start looking at. I mean, I, and my goals and goals too, I also talked about, you know, park maintenance. We're having a hard time getting a place to come do our parks. Do we contract out the, all the mowing in the parks to one company? Um, we have a lot of businesses in now then that do that. We have a lot of businesses that do that, have, have their lawn or their property maintained. And do we just make that decision to go that way? We'd, Okay. Idea before I got any yeah. and it was minimum 7 a week. Okay. So. I, and, and without knowing, yeah. we don't know. Yeah. Um, but if it's something that we know, it's, a, you know, it's, it, you can't make decisions without knowing dollars. Um, and, and so. That, and I, I you know, and, and again, with, with that discussion, mm -hmm. you, you need the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, we, there are cities that contract out pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you could contract out all the road work. Yep, you know, you could too. contract out plowing. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> and so there, there's reasons that we contract the way we do, and it's time to evaluate, is that the best thing to keep doing? And, and you know, obviously Lori and, and uh, you know, uh, Liz 
the, the pros and cons, you know, if, as you say, you've investigated contracting out parks and you can come back and say, I think we can get Morgan for less than seven fifty a week right. and get the same amount of work, you know, that becomes a no-brainer. When we first uh, deciding on building officials and we had an official in town, uh, we were leasing them out to other cities. Uh, and we decided to, to do something different with building officials. Because we had a fixed cost that we weren't using it all up, and if we couldn't lease them out to somebody else, we were stuck with the fixed cost. Well, we did the same thing with planning. You know, if their service is being used, they're being paid for. But it, it does, we talked about this when you came on, we wanted to evaluate each of our contracted positions. We started with the building official, and we need to keep having those discussions. Is this the best way to do it? So as a council, that's going to be part of the discussion. And whoever does it, whether it's inside or contracted, we still need the process, we still need the policies, the checklist, the communication, and the, the customer service and respect. And I think, Councilmember Alders. I think to add on to uh, Mary's discussion point, I think it's, if it's internal or external, I think that's one discussion point. I think the other discussion point, if we choose to keep it external, should we come up with a just a flat fee for, there's got to be an 80-20%, there's got to be an 80-20 on, here's the, over the last couple of years, here's the types of things that, Liz would typically run into, uh, whether it's new homes, lot splits, whatever, and have a set fee structure so we don't get into this. I thought I was going to pay this. Now I'm here, and I'm not happy. Because um, there's a there's a range Actually, of... Actually, now I'm here. Yeah. There's a here. range of complexity. Mm -hmm. Some of them are super straightforward, and that probably costs... Um, it may cost more than it would if it was an hourly rate, but there's going to be some that are complex that we may not know what we don't know when we get into it, that you're going to, you may have surprises, but it's not like the, you know, what I keep hearing is the meter is going to keep running. So I think there's some discussion points on how do we want to, if we choose to stay, I think there's a discussion point on, internal versus external and I think that's a great discussion and if we choose internal I think that leads us down one path if we say financially it still makes sense to do it externally then I think we should discuss what is a different what is a different billing method cost us and what does that look like from our contracted service provider and I, that's why I think that uh, that if we can provide the process and the documentation to go with it, that's a lot easier to understand too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I, I like your feedback on can we establish for some of, the, some of the normal things that we're dealing with the city in terms of what Liz works on, is there an establishment of some checklist that we can go through so a, a person can look at it that is not used to building a new home or doing the process on, okay, I gotta get this through this, this, and this, and this, and when I get through this, I should be able to get my certification of occupancy or I'll be able to go in front of the city council and it should be okay and I know what I need to get done. And Liz can guide him through and say, for your property, this one's not gonna be, this is gonna be not applicable, um, this one may be, this one's definitely be applicable, and we're going to have to, I'm going to have to come out there and look at it, but then she can go through that and guide them through that checklist and help them through that process. So that's what's on the table for, for Tuesday. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Rainbow. And when, I, when I bring that proposal up, I do not mean disrespect to any of our consultants. I'm looking at our, our residents and what's best for them. So please don't take offense at that or when I say to outsource the parks or outsource the roads or any of that. I, I'm looking at what is best for our residents. Well, and you have a fair point. I mean, the city has changed a lot, mm -hmm. right? So there's a, there's a lot more Liz time now than there was X number of years ago. Mm -hmm. So is there a tipping point where it makes 
financial sense for us to try to bring the process in and pay a salary and benefits versus a consultant. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Granger. Can I also bring up some stuff like committees and parks? Ad hoc committees and parks next time we meet? No. Yes. What has Lord Part of that we had mm -hmm. talked about a bunch of stuff. I, I think I think that meeting has to get picked back up. The the goals So the goals. don't yeah. put this no. in this meeting. No, because no, I, I think that's one of the mistakes we've made. The reason we didn't finish the ad hoc committees and stuff is we threw two other things, three other things into that meeting. And I think we need to, to do justice to this because Liz wants to know if we're going to change direction, this affects her dramatically. If we're going to keep going the way we're going but change how we want to do it, you know, I, I, I don't think that this is going to be something where, okay, let's get done with this and move on to one of these others. So I think that's a, another meeting we have to schedule to get back and say, because we never did sit down with the goals and the values that guide us and then how that affects the, the committees. How many, how many ad hoc committees do we want to try and tackle this year? <clears throat> uh, we'll have some idea um, after the 21st when, when Lori has, I don't know what your plans are with Lisa as far as hours. But that discussion has to be had. What what is the capacity in the office at this point? Um, it's going to greatly affect what we're doing with committees. But Mr. Mayor, got a lot of people that really want pickleball. Still, I'm, have to, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to Google that because I still don't know what that is. But I can't play it anyway, right? Now, I'm <laughs> sure. So, um, so I guess what I would suggest is that. Um, and we had this conversation before, and we had some of it online. Um, is that we look at our July 8th meeting. Uh, July 8th is, would be a workshop. Um, do we want to have that workshop to look at some of those things that we didn't finish up in our goals, objectives, and things like that? Now, that's 4th of July week, and that people are probably out of town. But um, yeah, just start thinking about getting those scheduled. And I know summers are difficult because people are... You know, if you have kids in school, they're on vacation, so you go on vacation. Um, but we do, we can't just drop that ball and, and um, not pick it back up again. We just can't drop that pickleball and not pick it back up. So, so again, to, to clarify, the work sessions, that's what we want to do is take something like that. Well, you know, the... Mm -hmm. Um, capital improvement plan needs to yeah, come up in a work come session. Up. That's true. That's good. Um, the sheriff's contract needs to come up in a work session. This is one I think, you know, because these are our guiding principles and our goals, we really have to get back to it because that's where we're going to start stumbling over each other as well. So, one option is the July 8th work session, not to go over the agenda for the Tuesday meeting, but to go over a specific subject matter. Can we, Mr. Mayor? Councilmember Alders, did you want to say people something? People are out of town. Go ahead. Well, I, just, I just think we just kind of sidebarred that, that people are out of town that week. So are people out of town? Are you out of town? I hope to be. I don't know. I, don't, I have something going on that night. I'm so. the fourth of the week. Is no good. It's normally when the whole United States takes that week off if they mm -hmm. have vacation at all. Well, exactly. that's the fourth is a Sunday. That's the week before we're going to take it. It's my days the, the uh, holidays. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so so start figuring out your calendars. Mm -hmm. uh, the following Thursday, the fifteenth, is an option. The twentieth is. Uh, What's yeah. happening the twentieth? Nothing. That's a Tuesday when we don't meet. So I'm just saying that. If we want to have work sessions, the 15th is one. If we don't want to do something on the 8th, the 15th is the following week, the 20th is the following Tuesday, and those are days we don't typically have meetings scheduled. But we do have to do something with the capital plan because mm -hmm. that's going to affect the budget. Lori, I don't know what you've got for budget meetings. Well, we need to schedule a work session for the capital improvement plan. Uh, that's number one on my list. I was 
month yet, but I don't know. Do we want to do the 29th every Tuesday in June? I am going on the 29th. Okay, then. Unless I can slip back into town for that. But. Or the 13th of July? We meet already at the That's 13th. The no. No. Maybe. No, because the first Thursday. Oh, because it's. Never mind, yes, I'm sorry. So, so the 20th. The 20th. The 20th. Yeah. 20th. Send me an email. For what, the CIP? Tuesday, yeah. July 20th is mm -hmm. the proposed date for CIP. Does that work for you? And the 27th, we talk pickleball. Gives me some time to Google it. That's P and Z, is that nice? Yeah. before pickleball season's over. What about on Monday nights? Wednesday's typically church nights. So are we going to make the 20th the capital improvement? Is that going to take three hours? I hope not, no. <laughs> Can we do pickleball and the capital improvement? That's what I was hoping for. Let's do both. So what are we looking to do? I guess what are, what's our expectations about talking about pickleball? Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. I believe that pickleball is probably the most straightforward project that we have that's going to require the least amount of money and the most amount of traction. Um, we have a pickleball expert. Actually, I've heard a lot from the expert, and I'm just kind of regurgitating what he has said. So anyways, I think this is a good way to get us into the process of using an ad hoc committee oh, okay. after not using them for so long, okay. give them a task, give them a budget, and this one seems pretty straightforward. Okay. I have my own pet projects that I have up my sleeve that mm -hmm. maybe I... Pickleball really was the mayor's thing. I have my own pet projects. Sweet. Okay. All right, so we're not looking that we're going to decide to do a pickleball court on the 20th. No, no, I think I think what we're what we I, need to I do is, is get back to our goals and then yeah, yeah and, and to actually see what the goal, we know that one's been stated by the mayor quite often, so that one's quite obvious. But I don't know what Mary Rainville's yeah. personal city goals for the city are, or I'd Jason Elder's, <laughs> or or mine. Maybe I'm trying to tell you all. I want to tell you mine. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> well, I, I think it's important. Got four minutes, we, man. We we get on the same page because we talked about values, priorities, goals. Um, because again, we have certain things that Laurie's got to get done with budget, capital improvement plan, and, and budgetary things that we have to get done yet this summer. And we talked about what can we get accomplished in a two-year period. Well, we're halfway through the first year of that, and we haven't even talked about. Mr. Mayor. Those. I think it's appropriate to do at that point because capital improvement plan is going to say, what are our goals? You know, what, what are we looking to spend money on? And it's going to have everything to do with goals. So. Okay. So what, not, Mr. Mayor? Councilman Rainbow. I'm Mr. So Mayor it's not a pick, it's not a pickleball meeting, it's a goals meeting. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Councilman Mr. Rainbow. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> it's an ad hoc meeting. It's an ad hoc committee. It's an ad hoc Mr. Committee. Mayor. Councilman Rainbow. Mary Rainville, what if I just put forth an RCA? You could do that. have all the monies association you know, yeah I just did some research and found out what I needed to do presented to council and they could look at it and go mm -hmm. I've had a week to stew, stew about this two weeks to stew about this mm -hmm. here's my input on it and we make more headway than by mm -hmm. sitting here and yep. talking about it that's good that's 
So that's one of the values of RCAs. <coughs> So we kind of drifted a little bit, so clarify expectations on the, uh, what's the date today, the June 15th. So we're going to discuss internal versus external position. We're going to discuss if it's external uh, flat fee structure, and then clarity of expectations on um, if there's a checklist and what that needs to look like. How we communicate. All right. All right. This is all for July 20th, or is this for no, this the other one? 15th. June 15th. June 15th. Next week. Keep so up. capital improvement, are we going to do? That's the 20th. The 20th? July are 20th. we going to do it? Yeah, that works for everybody. Yeah. We have to do it because we've got to get yeah, so make decisions. Yeah. 7 o'clock? 6 o'clock? I'm good with 6. But I... I mean, Schedule a little more. You're talking the 20th? Of July. 6 o'clock. Is that the only thing on the agenda that night? That would be the plan. Oh, it's on the work session? For the mm -hmm. CIP? Yeah. Oh, I think, I think what we talk about, that's what we talk about our goals and our values. Because that's going to... Okay. All part of it. That's going to frame the... The, um, a lot of decisions on CFPs. So, July 20th, 6 p.m.? Yep. Mm -hmm. You're bringing forth a <laughs> RCA, and we're talking capital planning? He can do the RCA for, for July meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, about pickleball. talking about here tonight, so yeah, Lori. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and obviously get that out to us as soon as possible so that we can see if there's any additions or corrections we need to make before Tuesday. Mr. Mayor? House Member Alders. Make a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>